Georgia has won the toss. The Bulldogs to receive, and they send Herschel Walker back deep. As the freshman, he's running back kicks. And his partner, number 19, Scott Werner, one of the best in the country at running back kicks. So it's difficult to kick it away from either man, really. You would think that they would like to keep it away from Walker, but not necessarily. As Brian Clark puts it in the air toward Walker. From the 7 to the 10 to the 15 and dumped at the 17 yard line. First and 10 Georgia at their own 17. Buck Ballou, the junior from Valdosta, coming back from a broken ankle suffered last year. There, of course, is the sensational freshman from Riceville. Jimmy Womack, good fullback. Amp Arnold, fine speed, the senior from Athens. And Lindsey Scott on the other side, number 24, the skill people. First down, Bulldogs. At their own 17-yard line, they line up as they often do in the eye. Walker, the tailback, but they start things with the fullback, Jimmy Womack, who gains two, maybe three, up to the 19-yard line. Men up front, Jeff Harper, the senior, number 66 from Macon. Blackwood, number 77, weighs in at 247. Joe Happy starts at center, though Wayne Radloff will see a lot of action there, too. Tim Morrison is a good one from Live Oak, Florida. Nat Hudson, perhaps the best of their offensive linemen. And the tight end, Norris Brown, 88, 6'3", 220-pounder. Second down, call it seven from the 19-yard line on the draw. We see Walker for the first time out to the 27-yard line and close to the first down. Fernando Jackson, number 49, made the stop. The Gators, who have allowed only one touchdown in their last three games, Golden, Galloway, Fisher in the middle, Doc Lucky bench presses 600 pounds, the right tackle. Little and Jackson are their key men, the linebackers. The secondary has been a bit suspect of late. Groves would be the best of the lot. Ronnie Stewart comes in now with three backs for Georgia on third down and inches. And they send Stewart in motion. Third and short, give it to Walker. He gets the first down to the 28-yard line. Fernando Jackson makes the tackle. Georgia very reluctantly to put the ball in the air, starting off very slowly and cautiously with an experienced football team. 24 seniors, 16 of them starting, keeping their poise, punching out a first down or two until they kind of get the feel of the game. Our first look at the real Ugo. That's Ugo <laughs> 3. My all-time favorite mascot. <laughs> Love that pup. First down. Georgia at the 28-yard line. Just the start of things. First quarter at the gate of Oldham Jacksonville as Walker sweeps to the right. Gets outside. The 35. Look out. He's past midfield and he's got a blocker. Cuts to the inside. Herschel Walker. There he goes again. guilty of hyping up people, making a big issue of freshman running backs. But there you see it for yourself, and it took them just a minute 51 into the game to break that one. 72 yards for the touchdown. So Herschel Walker, who went 76 last week, puts Georgia on the board. Rex Robinson seeks his 91st consecutive extra point, and that string continues. And with 13.09 to play in the first quarter, the Georgia Bulldogs out in front of Florida by a score of 7 to nothing. Al, what a start. Herschel Walker, as we said at the top of the show, has the blazing, incredible speed. When he breaks in the secondary, it's a mismatch, as we say in coaching. He's bigger and stronger and faster than any defensive back. Therefore, they're at a disadvantage. Watch from behind. You can see Walker cutting up and watch his speed going down the boundary. Stiff arms one gator back. Now it's just a foot race until he gets to the safety man, cuts back inside, and it's just a piece of cake for him, and he's just a freshman. It's incredible. Now let's, let's watch Norris Brown, number 88, on the right side of your line. He's the one that's responsible for springing the ball. The block number 88 is blocking Golden number 57, who is a very fine football player himself. You can see Walker just ignores the defensive backs. Al, he just act like they're uh, he's oblivious to it. It's 72 yards at a touchdown. Herschel Walker. After he had picked up the first down, 
Georgia kicking off. Robinson booting it deep. That one will go through the end zone, and Florida will take over at its own 20-yard line. Another quick play of 88. Norris Brown, the tight end, he's making the key block. Watch him lock on the golden number 57, finish his block, work his feet, work his body between himself and the ball carrier. That is a perfect execution on that particular play. Set up the touchdown run by Walker. So Florida taking over now with a freshman quarterback, Wayne Peace, Collinsworth, set to the right. And Peace immediately goes to the air and out to the 28-yard line to Spencer Jackson, number 89. There is Peace, who will not turn 18 until next Tuesday, the freshman from Lakeland. The steady one, Jones, was a tight end last year. Their top tailback is Doug Kellum. We will also see John L. Brown quite a bit. There's the All-America wide receiver, Collinsworth, and the man who caught the last pass, Spencer Jackson. Gain of eight. Second down to Florida from the 28-yard line. Jones, the sole running back. Off the play fake. He's setting up, throwing, and it's picked off at the 40-yard line. The deflected pass, and the Bulldogs are right back in business at the Florida 41. Mike Fisher making the interception. Number 31, a senior playing before the home folks. He lives here in Jacksonville. Well, that's a tough break for Florida because Peace is right on target to the receiver. The ball goes right through his hands, bounces up against his chest, and Fisher, 31, a senior, and Georgia has three, four seniors in their secondary. Very fine and lucky play. So a nightmarish beginning for Florida as Walker breaks one for 72. Georgia gets the ball right back. Buck Ballou at quarterback with Walker in the eye. Here he comes to the left side. And Walker is dumped at the 36-yard line by Kyle Knight, number 24. There's the man who made the interception, number 31, Mike Fisher, the senior. Six-footer, 173-pounder. Picked one off in the Georgia-Florida game last year. Second down, five. At the 36-yard line. Slot right. Walker, the eye back. Comes to the short side of the field. And just pulls over a man to get the first down. To the 30-yard line. Vito McKeever made the stop and also paid a bit of a price. That was the same play that he, uh, Walker scored his touchdown on. But they ran it into the boundary, which is a more conservative play, but still a chance to make a nice game because, again, Norris Brown made an excellent block on number 57, Tim Golden. Walker, just eight yards shy of 100 already, and we haven't played three and a half minutes. First down at the 30-yard line. First man through is Womack, who gets about three to the 27. Charlie Pell, the Florida coach, Frank, was saying that if his defensive linemen and linebackers don't make almost all of the tackles on Walker, he's in a lot of trouble. That's correct. His front seven, he, he thinks, is good enough to stop Georgia up the middle, forcing Georgia to run wide or throw the ball. Georgia plans to do this. As you can notice, they're just penetrating inside on rare occasions and going wide with Walker. Second down and six. Georgia at the Florida 26, and Georgia leading 7 to nothing. And Buck Baluda put it up for the first time today to the 23-yard line, and the ball is loose there. On the far side, and Florida recovers. So the Gators get the break they need after what was ruled as a completion to Amp Arnold, and then a fumble recovered by Kyle Knight, number 24. Baloo is just going to raise up and throw the ball to Arnold very quickly on a quick pass. Now, Arnold catches the ball, and while he's trying to run, this normally happens when you don't protect the ball and you're trying to run. He's going to catch the ball, try to come back inside, but Vaughn slips the ball, actually slips it out. First down for Georgia at the 21-yard line. Jones is the running back, but again, going to the air is Peace after the 36-yard line for Florida's first first down to Kurt Garrett, number 28, a junior from Blountstown, Florida. How about this? Florida with a freshman quarterback going right to the air, showing the confidence that they have in this young man, Wayne Peace. He's rolling out. Garrett is just on a look-in pass. One man out in the flat, one... Uh, inside, Werner finally makes a tackle on Garrett. First down for the Gators at their own 36-yard line. On the option to Jones. And they 
they run him out at about the 40 yard line a gain of three or four as Mike Fisher was over there to make the play one thing that Florida intends to do is use a lot of formations against Georgia they win the double slot on the last play and the reason they want to do this is to force Georgia to square up their defense you you really stop them from doing much of this stunning when you use a lot of formation here they are again second down and six the running back is Jones peace looking to throw and then keeping getting to the outside and stepping out of bounds at the 45 yard line for a gain close to five it'll be third and a yard and a half Chris Welton drove him out at that point one thing that has surprised me was with this freshman quarterback it's a well established the fact that freshman Al is supposed to fumble the ball and throw for interceptions since this young man has started they have lost and you can see on the right only three turnovers two intercepted and one fumble and three ball games and yet they have gained 11 fumbles from the opponent so they're eight ahead at this time third down a yard and a half from the 45 yard line and they give it to Jones and Jones is racked up as he crosses the line of scrimmage, going to be very close to the first down. We'll see where they spot it. Well, you, you're, you're at the mercy. The coach is at the mercy of the official spot. It's going to be very close. And Al, and I believe he's a two inches short. I, I do too. We're sitting right about at this spot. From our vantage point, and it does look like he is just shy. Joe Hicks, the referee. And you take a look at the rest of the men working the game on a balmy day. Just perfect in Jacksonville. Well, it's a little warm, Al, and I think that both coaches are going to have to be a, a short of a first down, as we both said, by a couple of inches. But both coaches are going to have to be concerned with the heat and substitute, we think, as coaches in the second quarter so that they have something left for the push in the second half. Charlie Pell making his first decision of the day, and he's going to go for it. Why not? Yep, fourth and inches from the 46. Georgia yeah. leading 7-0 with 9.53 to go in the quarter. The amazing thing is that he's doing it with one back offense and a double split. Doesn't have much power inside. Quarterback sneaking. Again, Jones is the sole back, number 30. And Peace will keep it himself and burrows for the first down. Now, one thing that quarterbacks do when the center is uncovered on short yardage, you have a natural hole or cavity, and many times you'll just automatic the quarterback sneak rather than turn and hand the ball off to the back and risk a fumble. And that's what he's seemed to do on that last play. If they're going to give it to you, you might as well exploit it. Absolutely. Right through the middle. First right. down. Gators at their own 47-yard line. Again, the sole setback is Jones. We've yet to see Kellum. This is Jones. Past the 50 and a yard into Georgia territory where Tommy Thurston, freshman from Jacksonville, makes the tackle. Again, a four, second down and six. Again, Florida is in a double slot, only one remaining back. And I want to say again, it serves a very useful purpose. It deprives the defense of their freedom of action and makes them think about a lot of things before the ball is snapped. Second down and six from the Georgia 49-yard line. Peace back to throw over the middle man open at the 30 yard line and the first down to Tyrone Young number 10 Jeff Hip, who has seven interceptions this season made the tackle first down Florida at the Georgia 27 young Peace did not have much time and it's a dangerous throw he turns watch this he's throwing the ball right down the middle his vision was impaired but young is right on target and another big first down for the Gators so Florida trying to capitalize on the fumble recovery after Georgia had intercepted a pass on Florida's first series. Jones bucking straight ahead for two or three to the 25-yard line. It'll be second and eight as Tim Crow, number 91, made the tackle for the dogs. I think we should mention that Florida's offense, as far as rushing, is last in the Southeastern Conference. But they have pretty good balance in passing. They've been 147 yards a game, both rushing and passing. Second down, call it seven. Ball at the 24-yard line. Again, the double slot with Jones, the sole running back, number 30. Peace keeping and tackled by Eddie Weaver, number 61. I wondered when Eddie Weaver was going to show up. He's one of the 
very fine defensive football players in the Southeastern Conference. He's six foot two, 260 pounds. He runs a 4-7, and the Georgia people say that he can whip any blocker he's ever lined up for front of. Third down, eight. Ball at the 25. 7.20 to go in the quarter. Georgia leading seven to nothing. Peace on a deep drop, trying to set up the screen, going to Jones, but he had no blockers out in front. And he's tackled at the 23-yard line after a minimal gain by Dale Carver, number 96. Well, Florida has been throwing the ball, and you would think that uh, they would be, Georgia would be vulnerable to the, to the pass or the screen, but uh, the offensive lineman didn't really delay the blockers at uh, the defense spent the line of scrimmage and let uh, the quarterback do his acting. Brian Clark who has made 10 of 14 this year, setting up a 40-yard attempt at an angle to the right, and the kick will be no good. It is good. I beg your pardon. He hit a wobbler that looked like it was going to spin off to the right. It wasn't the most artistic kick you've ever seen, but it got the job done. They'll take it. Georgia leads 7-3, 7 to go in the quarter. Here's the field goal by Clark again. When this ball leaves his foot, I don't think there's a person in this stadium that thinks it's going to be good. Al, I was taking my hands and saying no good to you, but he actually hit the ball on the top part. He didn't hit it in the center or the lower third, and the ball is just a knuckleball. It looked like he was going to slice it, and the ball is slicing, and it goes with inside the crossbar. Oh, How about a foot? Look at that. Rather be lucky than good. It's the top of the ball, as you say. The ball looks like it's going to die. It looked like not only would it be wide, but it was going to be short. It just kept on going. Al, that was very rem reminiscent of one of my passes when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way mine died, like a wounded Ooh. dove. Little screwball. Got the corner. Seven to three. Georgia on top. Charlie Pell in his second year at Florida. Came over from Clemson. Before that, he was at Jacksonville State. That's Jacksonville, Alabama State. Warner taking it about four yards in and bringing it back only to the 12-yard line. Good pursuit on the part of the Florida kicking unit. So Georgia, deep in its own territory, Doug Drew made the tackle. One thing I think we should mention that Georgia is first in the nation on the, on the turnover advantage. They have taken uh, 35 turnovers from opponents and only given up 13, and Florida is number two, but here in the first quarter, they both have turned the ball over. First down from the 12-yard line. Virgil Walker straight through the middle and hit immediately, but still is able to get a yard or maybe two. And it'll be second down, call it eight. John Whitaker made the tackle. The Florida defensive front uh, is particularly strong, as Warris said. Galloway at left tackle is a very fine football player. 260, lucky 260, and Fisher runs a 4-6. Nose guard. Second down, eight. Walker slips a couple of tackles, gets out to close to the 21-yard line, where it'll be third down and two. Val Brown, number 67, made the tackle. Well, Walker is going to go outside, and the safety man Knight is going to fire up and try to force it back inside, but he, Walker makes a great cut and breaks back inside before finally Vaughn brings him down. Golden, number 57, brings him down. Short yardage. Walker has reached the 100 mark. Seven carries, 100 yards, sixth time this season for him. But Florida comes up with a big play. Ron Coleman, number 92, made the stop. A senior from Tampa, the 6'4", 252-pound linebacker, made the play on Walker. Look over to your left of your screen, and you're going to see Coleman, number 92, come into the penetration in the backfield. Walker has no chance. Actually, it's a busted assignment by the offensive lineman, plus a great play by Coleman. Mark Malkowitz to kick it away. Ivory Curry setting up at his own 39-yard line and a dangerous and risky catch. And he's dropped back at the 36 by Joe Happy. So Florida takes over there after a 33-yard punt. 5.19 to go, first quarter. Georgia 7, Florida 3. The field goal by Brian Clark for Florida here in the first quarter. The first point scored against Georgia in the first quarter all season. In this their ninth game. Florida has been totally dominant through the first quarters of their first eight games. Now, Florida with the ball at the 35-yard line. 
Jones going straight ahead for about two, and it'll be second down and eight. One thing that uh, Charlie Pell did when the first string quarterback got hurt against uh, LSU is that he restricted his offense so that this young freshman quarterback could gain some experience, and now he's opened up. And there's a look at Vince Dooley. Great success. He's had only one losing season at Georgia. This is 17th at the helm in Athens. Second down and eight from the 37. A straight deep drop by Peace, throwing out to the 40-yard line, complete there to Spencer Jackson, making his second reception. One thing that Florida is going to have to contend with is that they've got, they're still using the double slot formation, one running back, and therefore Georgia can just tee off, Al. They can just go back as fast as they want to on the pass because one remaining running back is not much of a threat. And they still line up that way in the double slot. Going to the well again, third down and six from the 40-yard line. Peace. Rolling out and then throwing out to the 46-yard line, incomplete, intended for Spencer Jackson. What would you think in terms of Pell's thoughts right now, Frank, in regard to varying this offense now? Because Georgia certainly be, has to be able to make the adjustments. It, Georgia has an experienced secondary, as we already said, four seniors. They have two outstanding linebackers, and so they can make these adjustments. And, uh, Al, we may have a penalty. I'm not sure. I uh, did not see a flag, but... They've waved off whatever it is. Receiver to step out of bounds, catch the ball, come back in and catch the ball. Once you fleet pass, the down count will be fourth down. Okay. We'll look at the new interpretation of the rule. A receiver can be pushed out of bounds and come back in and catch the ball, but he can't on his own volition run out of bounds and come back and catch the ball. And evidently, according to the official, that's what he did. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass, even though he caught the ball in bounds. Mark Dickert averaging 44.8 yards per punt this year. His first boot of the day. Fair catch called for by Werner at the 23-yard line. So again, the Bulldogs taking over there. This is the first half of our NCAA College doubleheader. And our second half will feature those games. Some of you will see the Trojans against the Cardinals from Palo Alto. Virginia Tech taking on Florida State. McNeese State facing Louisiana Tech. USC ranked third and fourth, respectively, in the poll. Stick around. Those of you who will see that Stanford game, you're going to see a quarterback, John Elway, who is unbelievable. He's just a sophomore. He's going to go down as one of the greatest of all time before he leaves Stanford. Herschel Walker, the freshman, picks up the yard. After the 24-yard line, David Galloway, number 85, made the tackle. David Galloway is six foot three, 260 pounds, runs a 4-7, and the Florida coaches told me he may be the best athlete on the entire squad, even though he's a down lineman. He just made a great play against Walker. Georgia second to nine from the 24. Georgia seven, Florida three, 320 to go in the first quarter. Ballou rolling, going over the middle after the 32-yard line to Clarence K, number 84, a freshman. One thing that you can do with a fine quarterback like Buck Ballou, you can throw from anywhere on the field because he, the tougher the situation is, the more intense it is, the more secure you feel with it. His cake covered very closely by Taylor, the linebacker, but an excellent throw made the completion and the, close to the first down. Third down, half a yard to go. That was only the third reception of the season for Clarence K. Give it to the big man, Walker. Tries to get it himself, and I think he did with his forward progress to the 34-yard line. Just put his helmet down and ran right into Fernando Jackson. Well, one thing that we will notice through the ball game that, that Herschel Walker is still not a polished. It is a first down. Herschel Walker is not a polished at this stage of his career inside runner. Sometimes he's going to look very bad because he doesn't have the right experience of having the patience to wait for the hold to open or blast it out himself. And a couple of times already, he, he's looked poorly inside, but when he gets outside, watch out, as I said earlier. Georgia has picked up four first downs. Walker has all of them running. Walker coming this way and ganged up and loses his helmet at the 34-yard line. Fernando Jackson again coming to this side to make the tackle. Walker, just a freshman, go back and you think about 
Tony Dorsett. Of course, when in uh, in 73 at Pittsburgh, he was known as Tony Dorsett. <laughs> Good point. But he gained 1,586 yards. Uh. Bo James, 1,291. Amos Lawrence from North Carolina, 1,211 in 1977. And there's Walker, 1,096 through eight, coming in today. Flags down before the snap. On the offense. One thing that uh, you don't want to do is when you're trying to keep the ball on the ground and move it out from deep in your end of the field is jump all sides and force you into long yardage situations. Florida, by the way, will not blitz much during this ball game. The coaches say they don't want to take a chance of Herschel Walker popping the line of scrimmage when they have a blitz going. They're going to play steady, solid defense, giving them a bleeding slowly inside, trying to stop the outside and passing game. Blue will have to go to the air here. Second down and 15. Ronnie Stewart in the game at fullback, setting up in front of Walker. Give it to Herschel. Good hole. And Herschel gets out to the 35-yard line where Ron Coleman, number 92, makes the stop. So he gets back to just about the original line of scrimmage. And it will be third down and 10 with a minute 18 to go in the period. One thing that uh, the Georgia coaches have told me, they have been able to avoid the third long situation, which so heavily favors the defense because they can move wide and deepen and play for the pass and force you to run and possibly not make enough yards for the first down. On third and ten, they have Lindsey Scott wide left, Amp Arnold wide to the right, the play fake to Walker, going straight over the middle for Lindsey Scott. He's open at the 45 of Florida and a first down at the 44-yard line. Lito McKeever made the tackle. So the two wideouts, we highlighted both men on the pregame show, and it's Scott going over the middle here. One thing that we're going to notice throughout this ball game is the linebackers cannot get this deep because of Walker, the threat of Walker running the ball. And Lindsey Scott ran a perfect route. He's a great athlete, caught 70 passes in the first two seasons in an automobile wreck and hadn't quite fully recovered from last summer, summer accident. But Ballou is now three out of three for 33 yards. They come back the other way. It's Norris Brown on the tight end reverse, and it doesn't fool anybody. David Little, number 51, the fine linebacker, team's leading tackler, made the stop. David Little is one of the best linebackers in the Southeastern Conference. He's uh, a spirited player, and what we would be seeing throughout this ball game is his ability to read the play, diagnose the play, and very quickly move in and make the tackle. The Georgia coaches said that if you don't block him, you got to contend with him on every play. I don't think they're going to get the playoff, and they don't, as the first quarter has expired. But Florida hanging right in there after Georgia had struck early and then had a chance to strike again after the interception. But Georgia through one, holding on to a four-point advantage as we go to the second. Dog seven, Gators three. Start the second quarter at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Al Michaels and Frank Broyles reporting. 7-3, Georgia. And the Bulldogs have it at the Florida 45-yard line. Second down and 10 is Buck Ballou, who's three for three, rolls to his right, then keeps, and Ballou gets to the 34-yard line and close to a first down. He's just shy, though. Robin Fisher ran him out of bounds. That's something that we explained earlier. Vince Dooley would not like to see Ballou do very much. No, but he's going to have to some because of the Florida defense. Ballou is rolling right at us, and you see him break containment. One thing Florida must do is keep him in contained. They don't. Ballou gets outside. Watch him run out of bounds. Fred Ross has been close to do that. You cannot get your quarterback hurt. A good one like him because they don't have any experience. I'm told behind him. There's also a penalty, and that's going to give Georgia the first down. We had a personal foul call on Robin Fisher. For perhaps a late hit. We have the referee Mike today. So let's hear it. This defensive team is 15 yards and a first down. First down, the late hit. Fisher, number 66. So first down, Georgia. At the 20-yard line. Walker. And they stand him up. At the 17, after a gain of close to three. Again, it's Fisher in amongst them, number 66. Six feet even, 229 pounder out of Satellite Beach, Florida. One thing that Florida is doing with their secondary, which we've said before, is inexperienced. Three sophomores and one senior. They're moving over and leaving the tight end, Norris Brown, uncovered. Brown this time sets up on the left side. 
Walker the eye back on second and seven. Give it to Herschel again through the middle and tripped up at about the 14 yard line. And again, it's Robin Fisher who's been everywhere making the stop. Young Fish is not very big for a nose man. He's only six foot, weighs 230 pounds, but he can run a 4 600 and he leads the team in sacks with six. Third down and a little more than three. They have to get to the 10 for the first down. Walker already with 114 yards. A minute into the second period. Ballou throwing and complete for the touchdown to Ronnie Stewart who turned around and there's a flag down. Flag down back at the 17 yard line as Stewart goes in for the score. But let's see what we've got. It's against Florida, the touchdown counts. That was a great execution by young Buck Ballou. It's, he's lined up in the power formation and he's going to fake and roll out and try to get the, ha the fullback out in the flat open. Uh, you can see that, he, that uh, he throws in behind the receiver. He turns around and makes the reception. Really a great play by Stewart. Great catch by Stewart. Rex Robinson, his 92nd consecutive extra point. And Georgia's back up on top by 11 now, 13-39. Remaining in the first half, 14-3, Georgia. A sustained march for the Georgia Bulldogs, 11 plays, 76 yards, eating up 517. And with 13-39 to go in the first half, at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, 14-3, Georgia. We're waiting for the Georgia kicking unit to come out. There was a penalty, of course, on the touchdown that will be assessed on the kickoff. So Georgia will get the kick from the Florida 45-yard line. Charlie Pell, his team 6-1, the man who turned the program around at Jacksonville, Alabama State, turned the program around at Clemson, and in one year, after going 0-10-1 last year, has turned things completely around for the Gators who come in ranked 20th. All right, now, Baylor leading Arkansas in the first quarter, 7-0. Baylor trying to rebound from their upset defeat last week at the hands of San Jose State. And your Hogs are having some problems, Frank. Yes. Well, Baylor has a, has a very fine football team. They were, what, 8-0 for the first time in, in the history of their school. They've got an excellent defense, a fine young quarterback, and a great runner in Abercrombie. They, they may be the best football team in our league. Here's your Monday night matchup this week from the Astrodome, and that's a good one. New England 7-2 and two on top, AFC East. Houston tied for first in the AFC Central at 9 Eastern time. Onside kick attempted by Robinson. The ball is loose at the 30-yard line, and Florida has it. That was a very fine call by uh, the Georgia coaching staff because kicking from the opponent's 45-yard line, you kick it in the end zone anyway, and you get it back to the 20. That's no good. And if you try an onside kick, you only lose 10 yards, and you get 40%. Coaches prove over the over the years that you'll get 40% of the onside kick. And you'll see kick just put the ball, Clark, on his foot just enough to get it to roll. Now watch this. The ball is going to jump over the defensive head right in front of him. How they timed that, I'll never know, but they do, Al. And look like Florida had it. Then he fumbled it, but uh, Florida got it back. Lawrence Patrick, number 63, made the recovery. His piece has his man, and he can't hold on. Bert Garrett had it right there and dropped it. Well, on passes thrown to the inside, you will find that uh, those are hard to defend, but the pass, the receiver, is going to pay for it. And you can see that, that Garrett is going to be catching the ball in front and between the linebacker and the safety, and they're getting ready to search him right there at 180 degrees. He took his eye off of it and dropped it. Second down, 10. Florida from the 29-yard line. Georgia leading 14-3 early second quarter. Peace under a lot of pressure and a fumble. And we'll wait for the signal. It's Georgia. Eddie Weaver, number 61, was the man who got there to recover it. 
one thing that the quarterback, even though he's a freshman, he's got to know that when he turns up and decides to run with the football on a rollout pass, he's got to tuck it away because all the linemen are going to be trying to strip it. Now, you're going to see Weaver come in. Excuse me. Uh, I guess that was, uh, couldn't tell who stripped it, but Weaver, 61, is going to recover. Yeah, J Jimmy Payne, number 87, stripped the ball out. Very fine left tackle for Georgia Bulldogs. Well, Florida has to get tough right here or they are in severe trouble. They trail 14-3, first down from the 23-yard line. You've got Walker going to the right side and getting to the 19 for about four. David Little makes the tackle. The Georgia right offensive side of the line, Morrison and Hudson, average 270. They have quick feet. They are the best blockers on the Georgia team, and when they run over that side, it's usually for good yardage. We don't want to overplay early situations, but this is really critical for Florida here. Very definitely. Very definitely. On second and seven, it's Walker again moving to the outside and getting to the 16-yard line, setting up third down and about three. Dave Little coming well, over along with Sonny Gilliam. Going into this ball game, Georgia was number one in advantage of turnovers, collecting 34 for the opponents and only losing 13, but Florida was ranked second in the NCAA, and they've already turned the ball over twice. They had 30, excuse me, that's 28, I think, from Florida instead of 38. Those figures as of the moment. Now, counting today's turnovers, third and four. Ballou throwing, intercepted at the seven-yard line. Back to the 15, to the 20, and out to the 30-yard line. So Florida gets the break they need as Ivory Curry, number 26, turns in a big play. Half Arnold is the receiver. And he's going to be going in and out. And Curry is going to cut right in front of him. Just an excellent defensive play. He was playing man for man. And uh, actually, Arnold did not make Curry misread his intentions, and Curry just jumped right on him and covered him tight and look at him run with the football. A big break for Florida. Out to the 29-yard line, exactly what the Gators needed. Plowing ahead, gain of five. Out to the 34-yard line, Jones. Ivory Curry, number 26. When Florida needed the big play, he was right there. Sophomore makes his home in Miami. Second and five, 11.40 to go in the half, 14-3 Georgia, second down five. Peace, flag is down, and it's incomplete. Out to the 40-yard line, Calvin Davis was the intended receiver, we have a marker. That piece takes a real, he goes back. 10 to 15 yards on his drop. Well, he was trying to throw a screen pass, and he should set up at about six yards and then drop back and entice the defensive, rush, defensive rushes to penetrate deep, setting up the, uh, the screen. But he just dropped back and tipped it off, and Georgia was not fooled on the play. There are the turnovers. Florida the legal motion by the offensive team declined. It'll be third down. The penalty is declined. One thing that in big ball game, you try your best to call the plays and caution your team. Turnovers can cost you the ball game. Avoid those mistakes at all costs if you can. Third down and five. Calvin Davis remains in as the sole running back. Peace throwing out to the 45-yard line to Tyrone Young. And the first down for Florida. I would have to say that, that that was uh, more than just a simple pass by uh, young Wayne Peace, the freshman quarterback. He had to throw it over the linebacker's head. He dropped it in perfectly. First and 10. So the young Gators down by 11. Got the turnover they needed on the last Georgia drive. Brought it out toward midfield. And a gain of two by Calvin Davis, number 33, a junior from Auburndale, Florida. Eddie Weaver in there to make the tackle, number 61. Georgia has a lot of seniors on their defensive football team, and this double split uh, is not fooling Georgia. Now, Florida is executing pretty good, but they're making nothing running, and absent of running, they're going to be in serious trouble if they don't do something about it. 
Again, the double slot. Second down and eight. Keese, the short drop this time, and throws an out pattern incomplete intended for Chris Collinsworth. Number 21, Mike Fisher covering. The one man, of course, that Georgia will pay great heed to is that man, number 21, Collinsworth, 6'4", only 192 pounds. Great speed. 4-4, and he's the big playmaker for the Gators, and they've got to get the ball to him. He can run for a touchdown after he catches it, or he can go deep, so they've got to somehow find a way to get the ball to him. It's critical. They slot him to the left this time on third down and eight from the 49-yard line. Young goes in motion. Peace throwing to the near side, complete to the 40-yard line, and a first down to the 35 as Chris Welton made the tackle on Tyrone Young. One number 10 made the stop on the other and also pushed him forward about six yards. Well, Peace is going to roll out, and the reason he's going to do this, he's going to shorten the throw, make it easier to read the defense. He had a man in motion, which confused Georgia just momentarily. Then the receiver is wide open for the Tyrone Powell. Now watch the run. He cuts inside. That was critical because if he'd gone on out of bounds, it would not have been a first down. First down, Florida at the 38-yard line. Peace going deep down the near side and incomplete and nearly intercepted. Good coverage on the play. Spencer Jackson, the intended receiver. Mike Fisher and Tim Bobo did a two-on-one on him. Well, one thing that you better be careful throwing the ball deep against Georgia is because their safety man, Jeff Hip, leads the Southeastern Conference with seven interceptions, 13 in the last 15 games, and Scott Warner has five interceptions, 19 for Georgia in all. Before this game, I should say. Second down, 10, Florida at the Georgia 38-yard line. Bulldogs lead 14-3. Peace under a lot of pressure this time and incomplete. James Jones, the intended receiver, but Peace was moving back for his life that time as the pressure came from both directions, including Chris Weldon, and a penalty flag is down. One thing that happened, Georgia went into a blitzing defense, and sometimes when that happens, you get offensive uh, uh, holding by your lineman, trying to <laughs> grab some of those people that are going back, back uh, very quickly after your passer. The penalty is obviously on Florida, so the options are being discussed here. Joe Hicks is the referee. Be interesting to see if it's a five-yard illegal use of the hands or a 15, something new in college football today. We'll find out now. I would think if it's 15, they'll take the penalty. If it's five, I don't know. They'd refuse it. Well, the difference is 15, and the difference is that an offensive lineman cannot grab his and uh, hold the defensive man, but he can use his hands to leave the side. The, 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 the rusher gets the side of him, pushes him something down. like this. So there's a thin line, but uh, one that is to benefit the offensive lineman, letting them use their hands some this year. Second down and 25 now, back at the 48-yard line for Florida. Young goes in motion. Peace. Under a lot of pressure. Now setting and throwing. And incomplete at the 44-yard line, intended for the motion man, Young. A lot of Gators, Bulldogs, the stuffed and plastic mascots abounding in Jacksonville. <laughs> Take a look at the starters by class. You can see Florida, a sophomore-dominated team. In Georgia, more than half of their starters are seniors. Well, one thing that coaches want to try to avoid is playing many sophomores and freshmen, but Charlie Pell had no choice. He's rebuilding the program. He did a great job recruiting his first two years, and he's using it. Third and 25. 9.39 left in the half. Good protection this time, and sets it up and throws over the middle to James Jones, who gets down to the 37-yard line. And it will be fourth down and close to 10. Remember, they needed 25. Nate Taylor made the tackle. So the line of scrimmage, the 37, a field goal attempt would be about 54 yards if they want to go in that direction. And Brian Clark had come out initially, but now Charlie Pell says, wait a minute, let's think this over. And so Florida spends its first time out. Clark's longest field goal of the year, 51 yards against California. 
So time out goal by Florida. Nine minutes and nine seconds remaining in the first half at Jacksonville, where Georgia leads Florida 14 to 3. As we come back with 9.09 to go in the first half, Georgia leads Florida 14 to 3. Fourth down, 10. And Mark Dickert is back to punt after Clark had come on before the timeout. Peace after setting up the quarterback. Now drops back. Still, they're going to use motion on a punting situation. And they fake the punt. Peace takes the snap and then throws to the 31 yard line, incomplete. John L. Brown, number 14, was the intended receiver. It was a decent idea, but the execution wasn't there. Still, they would have been shy in the first down. Well, you're going to see Peace catch the snap from the up position in punt formation. He has plenty of time. He just makes a bad throw. Had he thrown the ball properly, you can see Brown is wide open, and he, you can see that he had plenty of time to run and make the first down. At that spot, he was about five yards shy. Charlie Pell, head coach for Florida, second year there. As watch this team relinquish the ball as Herschel Walker on first down. Takes it out to the 42-yard line. And Fernando Jackson, number 49, makes the tackle. Georgia leading at 14 to 3. The Bulldogs even though coming in second in the nation in both polls. Trailing Notre Dame, the Irish today are in Atlanta to face Georgia Tech. My old alma mater. Yeah. Say anybody but Notre Dame right now. Yeah. That's the last thing Georgia Tech needed That's was right. a visit from the Irish. <laughs> Through the middle, ball is loose, and Florida has it at the 46-yard line. So two teams that have not been turning the ball over very often this season have all of a sudden developed fumbleitis. Sonny Gilliam recovers the fumble. You're going to see a good hit because this is a contact foul. 49, I believe, Fernando Jackson. Watch him come in. Watch him put the head here. So up, the ball pops right out of there. And Gilliam recovers. There it is right there. So Walker gives it away. Gators get it back at the 46. 8.25 to go to the half. 14-3 Bulldogs. Well, Georgia has given up the ball three times this afternoon and Florida twice. Very uncharacteristic as far as these two teams are concerned. And one thing, Al, I think that we should recognize that failing to punt the ball and not making the first down is equivalent to the turnover. So Florida has a first down at the Georgia 46-yard line. Still, they go with a double slot and send Young in motion to the left this time. Peace on the reverse to Collinsworth. He has some space. The 45, the 40, and to the 33-yard line where Mike Fisher takes the tackle. So they're having a difficult time getting the ball in the air to Collinsworth, but they want to utilize his assets and give it to him on the reverse. That, that's right, Al. You've got to get the ball to your best athletes, and obviously Collinsworth is. It's a lateral back from the quarterback on the sprint. Watch him run with that football. He was a fine quarterback in high school, played quarterback as a freshman, but wanted to be a wide receiver, and he's a great one. Threw a 99-yard touchdown pass as a freshman quarterback at Florida. First down, 34-yard line. Through the middle, and a hole opening up for Jones, who gets down to the 22-yard line. Scott Werner made the tackle. Jones was a tight end last year. In fact, he started some games. He moved to fullback in the spring. Now you can see why. Look at his quick start. Number 30, he has a fine hole over the left side of the line. He runs right over the linebacker and he goes right on past 87 Payne. Finally, Warner, number 19, wrestles him to the ground after a first down. Florida with a first down at the Georgia 22-yard line. He's on a straight drop and look out and has it knocked down. Four Bulldogs that time just came roaring through, and Frank Ross was the man who tipped it, number 48. We're going to see the blitz, and you can watch it from the sideline camera. Watch the Georgia lineman in white shirts penetrate so quickly, and young Wayne Peace, the quarterback, can do nothing but run for his life, and he's a great athlete right here to even get rid of the pass and keep it from being intercepted. Look at the Georgia people. You would say he was under duress. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 22-yard line. Peace is now 8 out of 17 for 91 yards. 
The quick out complete to the 15-yard line to Collinsworth. And he gets to the nine. Jeff Hip ran him out of bounds there. On this particular pattern, they crisscross inside twin. Watch the Collinsworth go come out. And you can see the 29 screams off the safety man. Collinsworth grabs the ball after juggling for a moment. Fine reception for the Florida game. 7.15 to play in the half. Georgia leading 14-3, but Florida down to the Georgia 9, first and goal. Peace throwing it up for Collinsworth. Touchdown. Well, you saw two men matched up there who are going to make some All-America teams. Collinsworth, the wide receiver, Werner, the cornerback, and Chris wins that one-on-one -on -one battle, 14-9. That was a sensational throw and catch. And when we come back after the extra point, we're going to look at it again because a senior or even in pro football, you wouldn't see a better throw than young Wayne Peace, the freshman through to Collinsworth, a very fine senior receiver. Brian Clark, who hasn't missed an extra point this year, he's 19 for 19. And add another. So Florida stopping Georgia on a key drive and then coming back all the way. On the right of the screen, Werner's playing man for man. He's shielding all the way, and the receiver's not supposed to let Werner know where the ball is until the last minute. And then he was able to outjump Werner ball the touchdown and put Florida right back into the game. We'll be right back in just a minute. Georgia 14, Florida 10. Al Michaels and Frank Royals in Jacksonville. The numbers on the scoring drive. Didn't take them very long. 115. They go 46 yards. After Walker had fumbled and Georgia leads it 14 to 10. One thing we should mention, Al, is when the when you turn the ball over to your opponents inside of your 50, 70% of the time, the other team is going to score. It's just something about it. Coaches know this, and Florida took it right in on the passing of Wayne Pierce. Clark's kick, angling to the far side, and running out of bounds with it is Walker. That's the strategy that Florida was going to use on each of their kickoffs, put it on the left hash mark, kick it across the the field where Walker has to catch it right at the boundary and they put all of their rushes defense uh, covers right over there where he's not likely to run it very far. If you're Walker though do you let the ball go hope it goes out of bounds or what? Well you're afraid the ball might hit inbounds out and bounce back and Florida's offside gonna have to kick yep. it again but the, you're afraid the ball might hit and bounce straight up and end over the end ball does frequently and not go out of bounds. Let me tell you, that is a tough, tough penalty because more often than not, and we've seen it happen now, after a penalty in the kicking game, the other team get a new lift and come back and return it for a long distance, if not a touchdown. Syracuse is taking the early lead over Navy. North Carolina rebounding after last week's disaster at Oklahoma, leading Clemson 14 0. Minnesota with a touchdown in their game with Indiana. They're in the second quarter there. Northwestern, Michigan State, 7-7. Opening quarter, Baylor out in front of Arkansas, 14-7 in the second. Halftime, we'll have all the scores for you, of course. We'll look at both fans and our fireman's fun flashbacks. Again, the kick in Walker's direction. And Herschel lets this one bounce and downs it in the end zone. He lost the ball in the sun. Uh, looking right at, at that angle, the sun's right in his eyes, and he had to let it go. He just backed away from it, afraid he might fumble it. Actually, was a smart play by Herschel Walker, the freshman. Sensation. We'll take another quick look at it. You can see him turn at the last minute. You can see he lost the ball completely. He very wisely backs away from it so it won't touch him. Goes in the end zone. Once it touches in the end zone, it's down, brought back to the 20. Herschel Walker has already carried the ball 18 times today. Ballou. Out to the 24-yard line. Picks up four. Tim Golden made the stop. Interesting that uh, Vince Dooley was telling Jim Lampley in our interview on college football today that he hoped that 
Herschel wouldn't have to carry the ball 43 times, but he's on a pace right now in which he'll go over 43. Well, they're going to have to do one of two things. I think they're going to have to throw more because the Herschel is going to either have to carry the ball or throw because they don't give the ball to the fullback, and they don't want the quarterback to run it. Jimmy Womack is the fullback. Walker is the eyeback on the delay. Give it to Herschel, trip him up. As he got up to the 25-yard line, David Galloway made the stop number 85. So it'll be third down and six at the 24-yard line. So the Florida defensive front line, which we talked about early, is being very good. Galloway, Fisher, and Lucky are strong and fast, and George is not likely to move the ball with much consistency up the middle. They're going to have to go wide and throw. Arnold wide left. Knocks up Jones in the game, and he goes to the left. Scott to the right as Ballou goes deep, looking for Lindsey Scott. And Scott, does he make the catch? No, he was out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Sonny Gilliam was covering on the play. Well, we're going to let you be the judge, and the Georgia people are a little disappointed, but I think it was a good call from our vantage point. You're going to see Lindsey Scott come down with his foot right on the boundary. That is out of bounds. He has to catch the ball inbounds with one foot before it's a legal play. You'll see Gillum trailing him all the way. It was a great mm. to see the ball. His toes came down right on the white line. It's incomplete. All for naught. Mark Malkowitz to punt now. Ivory Curry, single safety for Florida. Low end over end spinning kick that bounces at the 45-yard line. And Georgia surrounds it at the 40. First down Florida at that point. 36-yard punt, 5.42 to go, second quarter. It's a good one. Georgia 14, Florida 10. But he's out of bounds. Yes, he's going to leap above Gilliam, number 43, and catch the ball. That's a sensation. But watch his right foot. Right, his right foot is going to come down clearly There's on the line, the and then his left foot is all the way out of bounds. It was a good call by the officials. He was right there, as you can see, and he called it immediately. So the Florida Gators at their own 40-yard line. First and 10. Florida trailing 14 to 10. Peace continues to put it up. Throwing over the middle. Complete out to the 45-yard line and to the Georgia 48-yard line to Spencer Jackson for another first down. Would you say that the coaches have confidence in this young freshman quarterback? First down. They've come right back and thrown a pattern underneath in front of the linebackers, and Jackson made another first down. A good call by the quarterback, Wayne right, Peace, a freshman. Let's go, let's go, Charlie let's Pell, let's go. watching his 17-year-old QB turn in quite a performance in this first half. First down, Georgia 48-yard line. Keep it on the ground this time, and James Jones gets a yard or two. You made a relevant point before, Frank, about the fact Bob Yuko was the starting quarterback for Florida, and he went out with a knee injury. They had to go to peace, so they had to revamp and make the offense more conservative. But apparently, Charlie feels that as of right now, peace has to go to the air more and was ready to do so and has been proven right. He threw 28 passes, he called 28 passes last week, threw 21, completed 13, so he was getting ready for this ball game. Second and eight at the Georgia 46-yard line. Flag is down. It's complete to the 42-yard line to Dwayne Dixon, number 83, but a marker is down on the line of scrimmage. 4.28 to go in the first half. Offside the call against Florida. One thing that we should make mention of is when a team loses their ability to run the football they also lose a very valuable commodity and that's pass protection because the defense can just ignore the run you give them you make a concession to them and they can put all the pressure on the pass and young piece offside. Uh, offside. offside young piece is going to be running for his life unless they can establish some run to pin those defensive linemen down Look at the passing yardage. George has been very conservative. They're going to have to loosen up or that conservative will bury him in a football game like this. Just looked over the shoulder of Vince Dooley, the Georgia head coach, at second down and 13. Florida from its own 49-yard line. The deep drop and the pressure applied. Peace now looking for some blocking. 
Gets back into Georgia territory and is dropped at the 48-yard line, close to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down, and we'll call it nine. To, to, to continue the story that we talked about, only 3.49 left to play in this second quarter. The quarterback in this particular situation, Wayne Peace, is only going to get one look at One look is about all he'll ever get because he hasn't got any running threat. One look and you better throw a scramble. That's about the way it's going to be the rest of the ball game. Third down nine. Once again, Florida in the now familiar double slot. And Peace takes his one look and throws deep down the right sideline. And incomplete. Intended for Kurt Garrett. Scott Werner covered. I would have to say that Peace laid the ball up perfectly. He's just a foot out of bounds. You're going to see the far twins on the right side of the offensive formation running up a, a blitz down the boundary. Garrett, and you're going to see Warner go up with him, but uh, the receiver came down just on the boundary. Out of bounds, incomplete. Fourth down, and Florida to kick it away. Officials calling time now. Florida wants a time. Timeout call. Took Florida quite a while to line up that time and get things organized. So they take a timeout. Let's look at the official. You can see that he's right there. Both feet were in bounds, I believe. Let's go back and look at that again and see if we can argue with the official a little bit. Let's, let's look at it one more time at the very end of the play, and you be the judge at home. Do you think the official made a good call? Let's see what happens. The ball is in his, it's in his arms right Oh, he's in. Now, and both feet are in back. Yep. Absolutely. So Dickert is in the kick instead of a first down deep in Georgia territory. Dickert will have to punt 319 to go in the half. Georgia, a team that got off to an explosive start today. If you tuned in late, Herschel Walker on the very first series went 72 yards for a touchdown. But Florida's been hanging in there after Georgia had taken a 14-3 lead. Back came the Gators. And now they're kicking, hoping to pin Georgia deep in its own territory. Dickens' kick is away. Werner letting it go out of bounds at the 22-yard line. So Georgia, 78 yards from the end zone after a 26-yard boot. Coming up, second half of this doubleheader, USC Stanford. Some of you will see Virginia Tech and Florida State. Others will see McNeese State, Louisiana Tech in the South. That Virginia Tech, Florida State game, of course, will feature Vince Dooley's younger brother, Bill, who's the head coach at Virginia Tech. And, of course, SC and Stanford, SC third and fourth, respectively, in the polls, and Stanford with that fabulous offense. On first down, it's Walker. Run out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Tim Golden. Excuse me, Al. I was going to say, uh, I was just too early to jump in, that Georgia's got a decision to make. Whether they want to stay conservative, as they have since they got a hit, 14-3, to three, and it's uh, hurt them, or whether they want to take a chance and throw the ball and whip the loo, I think they need to. I think they need to, to move the ball down and maybe get some more points on the scoreboard. Second down, nine. Pitch it to Walker. To the left side, has some room, 30, 35. And after the 39 for the first down, where David Little catches up with him. Frank, if you're Vince Dooley, I gotta think that in the back of your mind, not in the back, but probably in the front, <laughs> is the thought that if you give the ball to Walker enough, he's gonna break a few. No question about it, but Walker is down. I'm sorry, Arnold, wide receiver is hurt. We're gonna look at it again. The key again to this play is the block by Womack, 25, the fullback, out on the cornerback, and the block by Brown inside on, on the defensive end opened up a nice hole for Walker. So Arnold is the injured Bulldog at the 40-yard line. The fleet wide receiver. That would be a tough blow. He's a big play man in the passing game. They fit, last year they, they uh, counted up the big plays. Looked like he's got a hurt leg, and I hope it's not serious. A man from Athens, Georgia. 
Here we go. Everybody, help me out on this. So Chuck Jones comes in to replace Amp Arnold. At the 39-yard line, first and 10, Georgia. 2.53 left in the half. And the clock running now. With Arnold off the field, first down from the 39-yard line. Ballou looking, throwing, incomplete. Lindsey Scott was the intended receiver, number 24. With Arnold out of the lineup, Florida can now afford to pay a little bit more attention to Scott, number yes. 24. You're going to see the twins' action and how one man goes in and one goes out, and then the quarterback throws to what the defense dictates. And so Scott is wide open, but the ball is thrown low, and he couldn't control it. Incomplete pass, even though he's wide open. Now look at Amp Arnold, and they're working on the knee, of course. Taken up, trying to get a report on his condition. Draw play. Walker finds the middle, not to his liking, as he gets to the 41-yard line. Lucky Fisher and Galloway are all there. Check out some scores. And uh, well, we, we shouldn't put that up with Frank in the booth, but there it is, Frank. Well. <laughs> Baylor, as I said, uh, is a very fine football team, and Arkansas uh, is crippled, but uh, they, I'm sure they're giving a great effort and don't count them out. You can always hope it's a typo. Third and eight from the 40-yard line. Ballou scrambling, looking for the first down now. Has it and gets to the Florida 44-yard line. So Buck Ballou found nobody open and then runs for 15, and George keeps the ball, has the first down, drive alive with 158 to go in the half. Now, from behind the defense, watch Ballou. He stays as long as he can. He doesn't want to roll to run the ball, but his receivers are covered. He knows he's got to make a first down, and he shows that he does have good running ability, even though he broke his ankle against Auburn last year. He seems to be fully recovered there. From the 45, Ballou going deep, looking for Lindsey Scott. And it is picked off at the 21-yard line. Vito McKeever, number 36. So again, Georgia turning the ball over the fourth time today and the second interception. You're going to see the ball thrown deep across the field all the way to the boundary. And it's a good tight spiral. But McKeever leaps. That is a sensational play. Jumps up, catches the ball, stays in bounds for the legal interception, and a big break for Florida. Gators at their own 21, 151 to go in the half. Florida, remember, has already used two timeouts, so they have only one remaining. Wayne Peace, the freshman quarterback, keeps it in the air, and Young spins his way out to the 40-yard line for a gain of 19. One thing that we should notice on this replay is that Georgia has the un inside receiver uncovered, and Peace just lets him have it right quick before anybody can get there and watch Young run with the football. Twist, turn, protect it. He's in a crowd, cover it up, don't bump it. Good play. Florida came up to the line of scrimmage. They wanted to run a play without a huddle. As you take a look at the man who made the last interception, McKeever, but as Florida got to the line of scrimmage, P said, time out. He got a call for the T here, and that's Florida's last. So that was a rather injudicious use of the timeout at this particular point, because now if they get into field goal range, they might not have a chance to stop the clock. We'll see. Can you believe those turnovers? Georgia had only had 12 for the season. In eight games, they've got four in one half. Very uncharacteristic of a Vince Dooley coach football team. But give Florida credit. They've made some beautiful plays, interceptions, and then they've not walked loose from the ball for one. You know what's been the most impressive thing, I think, for Florida is you take a look at uh, Georgia, comparative statistics for one thing 1980. That I, one thing I was going to mention is that 8-0 uh, record, you know, first downs can be misleading, time of possession can be misleading, but Georgia's opponents have led them in both categories. But and in offensive plays, as you can see, and, of course, in turnovers. That's a big difference. Georgia has been careful not to defeat themselves, let the other team make the mistakes. Today, it's a different story. Florida, first and 10 from their 40-yard line. A minute 44 remaining in the half. Peace trying to get out of trouble and throws it away. And a flag goes down at the 42-yard line. 
Young Peace, uh, the quarterback, was in trouble from the very beginning on that play, and then we, we looked like it's going to be a screen pass, and you can see the signal of offensive lineman downfield. Tough break, 15-yard penalty. But uh, Peace, again, Al, as we've said, was running for his life um, this stage of the game with all those wideouts. There is young Wayne Peace from Lakeland, Florida, I believe, and freshman, six foot three, 205 pounds, and an outstanding athlete. Ready an ample offensive player, and for you, 15 yard penalty, who plays it down? First down. As Eric Russell, the Georgia defensive coach and assistant head coach, been with Vince Dooley all of his career, six, 17 years at the University of Georgia, and a very fine coach, he was upset. First down, 25. They keep it on the ground and give it to Jones, who gets out to the 28. So different strategy now. Florida, after those, or that penalty, instead of seeking a quick touchdown, they're going to probably try to just run the clock out. The minute 20. When did you get your coaching degree? Well, I, I listened to you all these years, <laughs> oh, Frank. I used to watch the hockey. Yeah, right on top of it. Absolutely. It changed everything, the penalty. Did. No need no need to try to score now. Try to run out the clock. See if Georgia takes its timeouts now on defense. They've got three left. Florida has none. Second down, 22. Jones again through the middle to the 31-yard line. Now let's see if Dooley uses a defensive timeout. We've got 56 seconds, 55. Sure he is. Call the call timeout, Vince. Make them kick it. And Another A, Mr. Yeah. Mr. All right. Mike. And that's the call now. Dooley calls All right. timeout. You and Ari, you see. <laughs> I know where this opening is going to come. We're going to ask see you apply for one of these head coaching jobs. <laughs> Coming up at halftime, highlights of the first half here. The respective bands, scores of other games, visit to the Florida campus in Gainesville. All coming your way at halftime. And our Fireman's Fund flashback. Highlights of last week's stunning upset by Mississippi State over Alabama. Hey, good thing for Mississippi State that they were off this week because the celebrating is probably still going on in Starkville. Another coaching point, old buddy. That's <laughs> real good. You're right. You can. That's Vince oh. Dooley. I want to just say I, I've known Vince for many, many years, and what a fine individual he is, a great coach. He's uh, one of the leaders in our profession. He has the respect and admiration of everybody. And there's Charlie Pell, who's got a reputation already for turning programs around. He's turned Florida around. And is this his second year from zero to ten, the six and one. Third down and 19, Florida from the 31 yard line. Peace rolling. And why does he go out of bounds? <laughs> That's a good question at this point. The 37. Well, when you play a freshman quarterback, he's going to do some good things and he's going to do some things that are not so good like yeah. that. All he had to do was protect the ball, hold it with both hands, fall on the ground, and uh, you get an extra 10 or 12 cents. On, seconds off the clock. Herschel Walker, if nothing else, it forces Georgia to at least use a timeout in that situation, which they didn't have to do. And Werner leads the nation, or second in the nation in punt return, and Georgia leads the nation. Vickers kick. From the 25, Werner sidesteps one man and gets out to the 29-yard line with 30 seconds left on the clock after a 39-yard boot. Crowd wanted roughing the kicker. Well, let's see. The rule is very clear. If the kicker has his foot in the air, he has the right to put it all the way back on the ground before he's he's hit. Or if he's blocked, in, if a defensive man is blocked into the kicker, it's not a foul. That was the occasion, I believe. First down, Georgia from the 28-yard line. Walker to the 30, and after the 32. Dooley hoping he can really spring one. Golden made the stop. And the clock running down. Georgia not indicating they'll take a timeout. They're simply going to run a play without a huddle. Second down and eight. Six make it. And they get it out of bounds to stop the clock as Chuck Jones takes the pass at the 36, but only six seconds remaining in the half. That's a little bit of a surprise. I think maybe they, they got a little bit confused as to whether Coach Dooley wanted them to go in the two-minute offense and run the clock out because it changed strategy. First down, they run the clock out. Second down, they're, they're going to the two-minute offense. 
Six seconds left. Doesn't give much chance. Or just throw the ball downfield or hand to Walker. I'd hand it to Walker. <laughs> you never know. You're exactly right. He will keep you loose every time. The opponent's loose every time he carries the ball. Baloo's going to put it up. He's going deep for Lindsey Scott. But he is well covered. And it's incomplete. And that will do it for the first half. Beetle McKeever was the man back there covering. He'd earlier made that interception. So it's halftime. The score, 14-10 Georgia. We'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from our local stations. And a reminder coming up after this one. A lot of you will see USC Stanford in the South, Virginia Tech, Florida State, or McNeese State, Louisiana Tech is the second half of our NCAA college football doubleheader today. Al, every one of those teams can move the football. They're all offensive-minded, and it should be some excellent contests. Real exciting football. I'll tell you, the one thing about Stanford, <laughs> when tell me about it. they are not dull. No. Guarantee it. Here we go. Second half. Georgia kicking off to Florida and taking it back in the end zone is Ivory Curry, number 26, downing it right there. Gators taking over at their own 20-yard line. <clears throat> so Florida... Offensively, as we start the second half, they've been going all the way with their freshman quarterback, Wayne Peace. James Jones has been the sole running back. Forget Kellum. He hasn't seen very much action at all today. And the men up front. And again, they line up in their double slot offense from the 20-yard line, first and 10. Jones again, the running back, lining up in what would be the right halfback position normally. And Peace on a roll, throwing deep. Down the near side and incomplete. All right. Kurt Garrett, the intended receiver. Let's take a look at the Georgia defense. Robert Miles is the left end out of Montgomery, Alabama, number 83. Jimmy That's Payne's a good one and had a fine first half. Led the team with six sacks coming in. Another good one is Eddie Weaver. Tim Crow on the right side out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Pat McShay has done a good job this year. Vince Dooley very high on it. Second down, 10. Florida from their own 20-yard line. Peace keeping it and getting up to the 24-yard line where Jimmy Payne made the stop. Check out the rest of the Florida de defense or the Georgia defense for you. Frank Ross, one linebacker, Nate Taylor. Fine one, number 47. There's your All-America cornerback, Scott Warner. Mike Fisher had an interception in the first half. Chris Welton, the rover, not big, but very mobile, does the job. And Jeff Pitt has intercepted seven this year. Third down, six. Florida from the 24-yard line. Peace turns, throws, juggled, and incomplete. Intended for Tyrone Young, number 10. You're going to see this on the replay. It's a very dangerous throw. Peace is going to reverse turn and just throw the ball up for scrambles. He's a little bit under the rest. His vision was impaired. But Powell, uh, Ty Tyrone Powell gets the ball just momentarily but could not control it. Had he not deflected, it would have been an interception by him. Mark Dickert to do the punting. Scott Werner averaging 16 yards on punt runbacks. And a fair catch is called for at the 41-yard line by one of the up men. As we take a look at the Georgia offense after the 35-yard kick. Buck below the quarterback. High back is Walker. And Womack, the fullback. Stewart has seen some action there, too. And the Georgia offensive line. We're going to have to check out Amp Arnold, though, who left in the first half, the wide receiver with a knee injury. They give it to Jimmy Womack, number 25, just trying to keep Florida a little honest defensively and here are the men who will have to stay honest golden the left end the senior number 57 Galloway out of Brandon Florida the junior Robin Fisher Doc Lucky they say he bench presses 600 pounds Val Brown sophomore from Gainesville at 6'4 228 second down six Georgia at its own 45 yard line Walker's first carry of the second half and Herschel doesn't go anywhere. Gets to the 46-yard line. The balance of the Florida defense, David Little, the great linebacker, number 51, and his compadre is a good one, too, the team's second-leading tackler. 
Bruce Vaughn, the corner, 47. Sonny Gilliam had a couple of good plays in that first half. Kyle Knight recovered a fumble, the rover. Tim Groves, perhaps the steadiest of the force in the secondary. Third down, six from the 45-yard line. Chuck Jones in motion. And they pitch it to Walker. Herschel gets the first down as he moves to the 48-yard line. Did it on his own, basically. Robin Fisher made the stop. Herschel Walker, you, as the play is coming right forward, just watch the power in his legs. We know he has speed, but he weighs 220. He gets good blocking. Watch him run right at us, right at, in our living rooms at home. Excellent run by Walker for the key first down. Always important to try to make a first down. The first time you have possession in the second half. <laughs> it's a good promo right there. Yes. First down at the 48-yard line for Georgia. Early third quarter, Georgia leading 14-10. Walker will swing it back the other way, trying to get to the outside. And Walker down the sidelines gets bumped out of bounds at the 33. Kyle Knight made the tackle. That's almost awesome when the play starts going one way and Herschel says, nope, let's try the other way. Well, you would think that would be just a freshman play for him to stop right there and then go all the way back, but he knows his own abilities, and they are phenomenal because he outruns everybody, and there's ball number 47. Cannot begin to get him down, and finally, he's knocked out by 24 Knight. First down, Georgia, at the 33-yard line. Pitches to Walker again. And he gets down to the 27-yard line. Val Brown made the stop. Nothing but power running by young Herschel Walker, the freshman, sensational. He's going to take the pitch and go outside, coming right at us, trying to stretch the defense. 24 night pulls the string. You can see him go over the block by the fullback. Then Walker turns inside for six yards. Ronnie Stewart helping to spring him that time. Second down and a long four. And Ballou pitching it to Walker. Walker inside the 20, and down he goes at about the 12-yard line. Tim Groves made the tackle. When you tackle Walker one-on-one, -on -one, you do pay a price. <laughs> yes, there's a mismatch when he gets in the secondary, but the play is going to come right at us. It's a fake to the fullback, Stewart, and then the option play. First option play run by Georgia in this ball game. A good block by Brown, knocking the cornerback out. And then the hit by the defensive safety man, I believe, Tim Groves. Walker coming out for a breather. Carney Norris takes over at the I-back spot, and the right side of the Georgia line is in motion before the snap that time. Flag down. Georgia a little bit too eager, eager to come off and block as Herschel Walker. Look at this for the freshman in this ball game. Beginning of the third quarter, Al, already 189 yards. Penalty will be against Georgia. He's the type of back, Frank, and some guys get the ball and chug through the line and wind up getting two. He chugs through the line and winds up getting six. That's exactly what uh, the coaches said. Once he breaks the line of scrimmage, he's the most explosive football player they've ever seen play in this part of the country. And we said earlier, offside against Georgia. First and 15, they can't make a first down on the two-yard line, but to finish, when he breaks the line of scrimmage, watch out because not a defensive back in America is likely to catch it. First and 15 from the 17-yard line. Ballou giving it to Norris, who gets to back five, and it'll be second down and 10. Well, Georgia Tech has taken in the second quarter, no less. Leading Notre Dame, 3-0. Notre Dame ranked number one in the nation. That would be as shocking as Mississippi State. That would be even more shocking than Mississippi State beating Alabama last week. Yes, it would, and it would fire this Georgia team up. <laughs> they may play like Superman. They're already playing pretty darn good. Second down and 11. Ballou. Gets to about the eight-yard line, where Mike Clark makes the stop. So it'll be third down and about six for the first down and eight for the touch. Watch the left corner of your screen. You're going to see Lindsey Scott, number 24, trailing cross on the bootleg. Look how open you. Please, give me the ball. Give me the ball, please. But to Ballou, to his uh, 
benefit. He's running to the left, and he never could pick him up. All for note, third down and about seven. Meanwhile, Walker comes back into the game. We haven't seen Amp Arnold here in the second half. Out with a knee, Chuck Jones in the slot to the right. Scott outside him, Ballou looking that way. Buck going to the end zone with it, and incomplete. Broken up by Ivory Curry, who had an interception in the first half. Number 26, the left corner. We're going to see just the end of it, and Curry had a chance to intercept it. He broke in front of Jones, number one. Watch Curry, number 26, go right in front. The ball bounces off his shoulder pads. Otherwise, he would have had another interception. One early stopped the Georgia drive. Rex Robinson will now attempt to make his 53rd career field goal. The NCAA record is 56 by Tony Franklin of Texas A&M. And the kick is good, so he is three shy of Franklin with two and a half games still left on Georgia's schedule. 24-yard kick, 9.38 to go third quarter. Georgia now up by seven, 17 to 10. Georgia now leading 17 to 10 with nine minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter in Jacksonville on an 80 degree afternoon. Bulldogs and the Gators at the supposed neutral site. We're in the state of Florida, but half the tickets are allotted to Georgia, half are allotted to Florida. And it's always quite a weekend. A lot of interest in this football game by the, from both states. It's more than bragging rights go to the victor. Victor, I'll tell you that. Well, Rex Robinson, good deep kick, and John L. Brown will have it come out to the 20 yard line as we take another look at Robinson's field goal here. There's a little bit of a uh, questionable call as you're going to see Robinson kick the ball. He brings his foot back to the ground. He loses his protection and he is then knocked down by Curry number 26. I believe that the interpretation is that the kicker loses his protection once his both feet are back on the ground. First down for Florida. Peace flipping to Jones. Looking for a block, stays inbounds and is near a first down. Pat McShay, number 41, made the tackle. Pickup of nine, and it'll be second down and one. On this play, you're going to see where the coaches have real confidence in a young freshman quarterback running the option play, makes the end freeze, pitches back to Jones, who turns downfield, trying to pick up the block from his wide receivers, and finally gets him then for a nice gain of nine yards. Second and one. They let Jones do it again, and he gets out to the 33. So Florida has a first down. Florida putting the ball up a lot today. Here's the comparison of the two quarterbacks. Beast 12 out of 24, 144 yards, one interception. Blue 5 out of 11, 50 yards, and two interceptions, one TT of P a piece which is a little bit surprising. I thought Ballou would throw a lot more than he has. I think Charlie Fell did too. The Florida coach. First down from the 32 yard line. It's Jones. No room that way. Tries the other. And gets just about back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Uh, defense. Hey, uh, <laughs> There's uh, a fellow who should have a Nielsen book I suppose. Hey, uh, All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should have gone to the barber yesterday. <laughs> no actor strike in Jacksonville, I suppose. <laughs> Second down nine. Oh well. From the 33 <laughs> yard line. Blame that one on Terry O'Neill, our producer. <laughs> from the 33 on second and nine. Peace. Throwing out to the 37 and incomplete. Intended for Calvin Davis, the running back number 33, who is coming out. Nate Taylor covered on the play. It'll be third down and nine. One thing we want to make mention again, we did in the first half, that in the absence of any running by Florida, which has been uh, practically nil, they're going to get very little pass protection. George is going to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. He's going to get one look and then run for his life if he doesn't throw. Third and nine from the 33-yard line. Double slide again. Peace pitching it. And after the 34-yard line, Calvin Davis. It was all Davis could do to make sure he had control of the ball that time. 
Pat McShay made the tackle. So the Georgia fans again coming to life. They lead 17-10, and they're going to get the ball back. Mark Dickert to do the punting. Dickert's done a good job. This has been one area in which Florida has greatly improved. One of the key things for Pell was to find the kicker, and Dickert has certainly filled the bill. High kick, not much distance, however, and Werner crawls for and makes the fair catch at the 32-yard line, and we've got a penalty flag down. Werner was pointing. Some contact being made in front of Werner. Number 53, Rod Brooks, uh, lost his poise a little bit, and he grabbed the Georgia man and just him and threw him to the ground. Highly uncalled for and, and unnecessary. We're going to take a quick look at it and let you be the judge of really something that's uncalled for by number 53, Rod Brooks. They march the penalty out to the 48. Personal foul, orange team, dead ball foul. Be first and 10. Let's see if we can see it on the left of the screen. Number 53 is going to grab the Fisher number 31, twist him around. Now he's going to throw him to the ground. Boom. And that's a penalty. And it should be. First down for Georgia from the 48-yard line. Walker slipping to the outside. Puts his head down and picks up about five more yards after he was initially stopped. We're going to see Herschel Walker make maybe his best cut of the ball game. He's going to turn up the field and the hole closes. He hesitates. Now watch this instinctive move. You don't teach this. Well, we already picked it up past him. He goes on down the boundary. But he made an instinctive move that got him clear into the secondary for the first down. He's over 200 now. That's 204 yards on 29 carries. Give it to the fullback, Jimmy Womack, and another penalty marker is down at the 32-yard line. Could be a face mask call. We'll see. Yep. Another penalty against the Gators. Well, that's two penalties that uh, have taken them out of pretty good field position and put Georgia in scoring territory, trailing by seven points. You don't need to make mistakes like this. These are unnecessary, although I'm sure that that particular one was inadvertent. That's 30 yards in penalties now on this one drive alone. Personal foul. Face pass. Defensive team. Look at Walker's numbers, already 204 yards, and he's rested. That's the, he hadn't had the work to get the ball down on this particular drive out, so watch out. First down from the 18-yard line. Walker looking inside. There goes Herschel, and he gets the first down and nearly the touchdown. Just stopped at the four by Fernando Jackson, who temporarily saved six points. Unbelievable. Watch his patience. Patience, patience will come, success will come your way, who will persevere. Watch him, hesitate. Let the blocking develop and then explode, accelerate all the way to the four-yard line. What a player. Herschel Walker with six minutes and nine seconds left in the third quarter has 219 yards. So he's on a 300-yard pace at the moment. Tries to pick up a few more, but he's bunched up in the middle this time as Florida stiffens. Florida had a key defensive series early when they were trailing 14-3 and were able to come up with an interception. This, again, would be one of those circumstances, perhaps more critical now because we're well into the game. Well, a touchdown by Georgia at this stage, I think, uh, would uh, give Georgia such a psychological boost, and it would uh, just kind of let this win out of uh, Florida and boy when that happens watch out second and goal from the three yard line Walker looking for room puts his head down and they stop him again this time at the two yard line Fernando Jackson made the stop very little mystery when Georgia gets down deep as to who's going to get the ball <laughs> absolutely not watch the line play watch the intensity both teams are trying to make a great effort and a great execution of their assignment and Walker just turns in but a fine play by David Little turned him back towards his own goal line third down goal from the one and a half 
Stewart in motion. Ballou trying to get back, and he stopped again. It's David Little, number 51, who stops Ballou. Well, I think given this set of circumstances, they'll go for the field goal. Get three points. Don't waste a scoring opportunity. Don't miss an opportunity like this. You've got Florida on the run. You, so I think you'll probably go for the field goal. Are you surprised that call, Frank? I was surprised with the rollout pass. The Stewart was wide open for the touchdown, but uh, Ballou has turned up field instead of just taking his time. He should have always been looking for the pass. Instead, he turned up and tried to run and couldn't make it. Rex Robinson should be an easy one for him. 20-yard field goal and no problem. So the clock stopped with 3.58 remaining in the third quarter of Jacksonville. It's Georgia 20 and Florida 10. We'll be right back. All right, so Alabama leads 7-0, and here are the standings coming into action today in the SEC, Georgia, and LSU. Unbeaten, Florida, Alabama, and Mississippi State, each with one defeat. And, of course, the winner goes to the Sugar Bowl on New Year's Day. Georgia leading here 20-10 to 10 as Rex Robinson puts it in the air. And another deep kick, and down there by Ivory Curry in the end zone. Well, John Steinbeck right, had his Charlie, me. but Georgia travels with its Uga. I'm telling you, that Huff is... He's pretty to a lot of people. Uh, he's a favorite mascot. He's where, wherever the Bulldogs are, you'll see Uga 3. Well, somehow, Florida, in this drive, has got to reestablish their offense and get some momentum back. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult for them to keep from getting another touchdown scored on. First down, Florida from the 20-yard line. Williams is the running back, and this is Collinsworth on a very deep reverse. Chris almost looked as if he was setting up the pass and then runs out of bounds. Collinsworth can throw and had that, I think, in his mind. Well, he runs out of bounds. Very, very good call, Al, because he was going to throw the pass. You can watch the receivers as Collinsworth comes around on the reverse. Georgia had played it beautifully. Right. Over to the right yeah. is uh, number 87, Jimmy Payne, and then of course, Collinsworth could not get time to pull the ball up and throw it. I don't think the receiver was open anyway. Georgia was not fooled on the play. Second and 13, Terry Williams is the sole running back in this set now, number 31. Young goes in motion. And the pass complete out to the 22-yard line, down the sidelines, and staying in bounds is Tyrone Young out to the 32 for the first. Let's see where they're going to spot it. Good enough for the first down, after the 31. Florida has <coughs> man in motion, and Tyrone Young is going right out the flat, and he's hits him, but the key to it is that Young is going to break a tackle right there from Werner, and then makes the first down. That was a fine effort by the split receiver to make the first down. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. He's throwing over the middle and complete out to the 45 to Kurt Garrett. So here come the Gators. Right back again, trailing by 10, 20 to 10. You're going to see Garrett break all the way in the middle in the, between the linebackers, and the ball is right on target. Of course, Garrett has to turn around, but that's a fine catch. Turn 360 degrees, catch it, protect it, ball, first down. Good execution by Peace. Tough throw going to the left. 318 left, third quarter. Florida with the ball, Georgia leading 20 to 10. First down at the 45 yard line. Peace going deep, looking for Collinsworth, and Werner is out of bounds. Second down and 10. Good play. Couple of scores for you. Louisville in the second quarter, leading Pittsburgh. Heath ranked Panthers struggling 9 3. And uh, sorry about that, Frank. Baylor 35, Arkansas 7. Baylor taking it out on the Razorbacks after being upset by San Jose State last Saturday. Well, if they now, if the PA announced that Notre Dame was trailing to Georgia Tech, these Georgia people, I've seen it happen, power up and become supermen. Second and 10 from the 45 yard line. Peace under some pressure this time, and they sack him back at the 30-yard line. 
Jimmy Payne came bursting through. It was simply a matter of time. Payne has spent a good deal of this day in the Florida backfield, and he gets his sack here. That is young Jimmy Payne's seventh sack of the season. He's a very talented young man. He's playing the same position that Bill Stansel made All-American. He flip-flops from one side to the other, always coming for the passer with a free rush, and he is very talented. Third down and 24 from the 31-yard line. Get the fullback, Connor! Come on, get the fullback! Fullback to win! Peace will run this time. Looking for the sideline and gets out to the 40-yard line. Well shy of the first down, but he picks up 10. And gives Dickert a little bit more room for the ensuing punt. At the 39, it'll be fourth down and 16. As Dickert comes in to boot it away, and Scott Werner drops back deep at his own 20-yard line. Fair catch for Werner at the 25. So the Bulldogs get it back there. Two minutes and two seconds remaining third quarter. That was a 36-yard punt, and Georgia leads Florida by 10. Here at the gate of all in Jacksonville, 2-0-2 to play. Georgia leading Florida 20-10. Bulldogs at their own 25-yard line, first and 10. Two things we should take note of on Georgia's last drive. One of them, Herschel Walker establishing a new single-season rushing mark. Eclipsing Willie McClendon's old mark, and he might add a couple here as Herschel takes it out to the 31-yard line. McClendon rushed for 1,312 yards in 1978. And right now, counting that last run, 1,323 yards for Herschel Walker. It's just phenomenal. He's just a freshman, as all of you already have heard many, many times. But look at his poise and setting up the blocks, stretching out the defense. And when he cut up, he made a nice game. Single season freshman record, 1,586 yards. Tony Dorsett had been in 1973. Second down and four from the 31 yard line. Slipping is Jimmy Womack at the 32 yard line. The other note we want to make in regard to Georgia would be Rex Robinson. The field goal that made it 20 to 10 gave him 254 points in his career. That tied the Southeastern Conference scoring record which has been held by a running back, Charles Alexander of Louisiana State. To have a kicker like Robinson is comforting for a coach because you're going to get stopped some, and when you don't miss a scoring opportunity, boy, it makes a big difference to the, to the psychological attitude of your team. There's Walker. By the way, Georgia has just taken a timeout with 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. But there's a graphic illustrating exactly what Walker has done game by game. You can see the 69 and 44 yards in the middle against TCU and Mississippi can be uh, blamed on the fact that uh, he had a sore ankle those two weekends. Came back against Vanderbilt, and now in three of his last four games, Frank, well over 200. Well, I think that it's worth mentioning again that those obviously, there's Walker, number 34, 220 pounds. That's what I was going to say, six foot two, and he has the speed. He has told us that he has run a 9-2, 100-yard dash, a 4-2-40. Now, I said earlier, we think about this in terms of 170-pounder, not 220. So that's the phenomenal athletic skills that this young man has. And you don't see anybody like this. And, and coaches maybe one time in a lifetime, if that. Darrell Royal and Freddie Aker shared uh, Earl Campbell, which was he was about 230 and ran a, maybe a 9-6 or something like that. But yeah. I think this is the most phenomenal thing that I've seen in college football in a long, long time. And he's a fine young man to go with a lot of poise, as we've seen on our telecast uh, uh, last Saturday and this and the day. On third down and three, Ballou gets wrapped up at the 30-yard line. So a big defensive play turned in by Mike Clark of the Gators. And Georgia unable to move the ball on that series. They'll have to kick it away in the waning moments of the third quarter. Georgia leading it 20 to 10. Now for which to kick it away. 
John L. Brown back to Florida. The rush is on, but he gets it away. And this is Curry now, back at his own 20-yard line with no blocking. And, of course, that's what happens when you send everybody in. And a fumble. Georgia thinks they have it, but I think it was blown dead. It was at the 19-yard line. Blown dead there after a 48-yard kick. There are two things about that fumble, about the kick and the fumble. One is that the kicker gave a good ex execution of a, a rough end, but the official didn't call it. But here's what the referee called that uh, Curry had already had his forward progress right there. When he fell back, the ball came out. Forward progress stops the ball. It's dead and Florida's in Florida's position. Possession. First down from the 19-yard line. Tyrone Young goes in motion. He's throwing. Finds Young. And they run him out of bounds at the 29-yard line with seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. At halftime, it's 3 nothing Georgia Tech leading Notre Dame. That is incredible. It's unbelievable. It really is. Bill Curry is a fine young man, but that's a great job he's doing against Notre Dame. And there's Nebraska over Kansas State in the first quarter, 3 to nothing. First down, Florida. Gators at their own 30-yard line. James Jones will take it out to the 34, and then they'll switch sides because that is the final play of the third quarter. So at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, 15 minutes to go as we go to the fourth period. Georgia trying to stay unbeaten, leading Florida 20 to 10. We'll be back after a word from our local station. All right, Dave, back here in Jacksonville, it's Georgia leading Florida. 20 to 10. So with LSU down by two touchdowns, Bulldogs 15 minutes away from going into first place in the SEC as we start the fourth quarter. Second down and five for Florida from their 35 yard line. Peace going deep down the right side line, nearly intercepted and incomplete. Jeff Hip came that close to picking up his eighth interception of the season on the pass that was intended for Kurt Garrett, number 28. It's a fly pattern. All, both receivers going straight down the field, and Garrett, number 28, is going to actually prevent the interception by hip number 49, and that's what he's supposed to do. If he can't catch it, by all costs, prevent the interception. Jeff Hip has 13 interceptions in the last 15 ball games. Third down and five. Gators at their own 35-yard line. Peace, quick in to Young. Breaks a tackle and made the wall away. He's got one man to beat. Cuts back in. And Werner gets it at the 11-yard line. Tyrone Young. At one point, he had one man between himself and the goal line, but he had to make a geek, which enabled Werner to come back and get the angle on it. It's a little quick pass. Georgia has no one covered in front of him. But the important thing is that Tyrone Young is the second best runner on this field. That is a sensational run for a wide receiver. He's already made four key first downs in the ball game. What you make people miss it, turn on the speed, and very close to a touchdown. 54 yards and first and 10 from just outside the 10. And it's Jones, and he's in for the touchdown. Lightning can strike. Watch the momentum that this that Jones has. He weighs 230 pounds. He nearly goes down to five, but he dives and makes the touchdown to put Florida four points behind at this time. What an effort by young James Jones. Played tight end last year. Started three games at tight end. Moved the fullback in spring training. Was quickly put in the starting lineup, and that was good evidence for on that last play. The Gators were so jubilant after the touchdown 
that to avoid getting a delay of the game called against them, they had to take a timeout to get set up for the extra point. How quickly things can change because of good athletic skills by Florida, a wide receiver, and now fine run by their fullback Jones, who would not go down. Jamie Jones, as he dies and breaks the plane, even though his body's not across the goal line, the ball breaks the plane under his possession. Touchdown. They're going for two. You bet. From the near hash mark. That's their option. You can have it set up wherever you want it at the three yard line. And they requested the left hash mark. So they'll go for two with a score 20 to 16. No tie in Charlie Pell's thoughts today. He wants to set up a game winning field goal if he can. They send Young in motion. Peace has a man open. And they get the two. Tyrone Young, number 10, who made the big play on this drive and goes in for the two-point conversion. Watch the pattern now for Florida. Always has two wide receivers on each side. And you're going to see Peace elude the rush. The key to the success is that he is able to get around the blitzing strong safety. Watch how wide open Tyrone Young is, and he makes a great effort for the two-point play, and we'll be right back with a score, 20-18. to 20-18, to Georgia, Tyrone Young. Going in for the two-point conversion. Can you believe that Tyrone Young, we talk about a star being born, he had never caught a pass in his Florida career until today. He's caught eight. He was a quarterback last year. The kick fielded up at the 19-yard line by Jimmy Womack, and he stumbles up to the 20, and that's all. Tyrone Young, he plays on the Florida basketball team. He was the QB last year, started games against... LSU and Alabama, and of Ocala, Florida. He's going to make it seven officially. What, what a performance. What a performance by this young man after he's caught the ball. He's caught it in a crowd and under duress and made tremendous runs for first downs in that long run on the last series. First down from the 20-yard line for Georgia. So the Bulldogs with a precarious two-point advantage. So their main man, Walker. Turns it up and gets out to the 35, loses the ball, but they had whistled it dead. Chuck Jones laying on top of the ball, but it was whistled dead earlier. Walker's coming right at us with a block by Womack, number 25, to pave the way for him so he can cut back. Now watch how the ball is stripped out. Let's see if the official 26 Curry rushes him to the ground, and when he hit the ground simultaneously with the ball in his possession, it's dead and belongs to Georgia. First down, Bulldogs from the 33-yard line. Chuck Jones in motion. And it's Walker again. Hit down at the 35-yard line after a minimal gain by Tim Golden. So Georgia trying to protect its unbeaten mark, trying to take a big step to the Sugar Bowl, but keep Florida in mind. The Gators are right there in the hunt. Unbelievable, that last series. Well, let's put Florida right back in momentum, with momentum. Second and eight from the 35-yard line. Ballou, nice protection, throws it to Walker, but he falls down at the 37-yard line. Had a little bit of blocking, too, out in front of him. One thing that one thing that surprised me is Ballou has lost a little confidence in throwing the ball downfield out. He had two receivers open, but he didn't want to take the chance, leading by only two points, and he threw the ball to the walker who he faked to originally for a short game. He's, he's got to get his courage back and his confidence and throw the ball. He's missing one of his favorite targets, Amp Arnold, out with a knee injury in the first half. Third and seven, it's Walker again, and they stop him at the 35-yard line. And the Florida partisans are going wild. Florida will get it back. Kyle Knight is down. Injured Gator, number 24, really took a look. Well, on the, on the play, Kyle Knight is directly responsible for stopping the play because he, as we say, pulled the string and crashed into the backfield and turned Walker back inside into pursuit for no gain. 
he intended just to sacrifice himself but not hurt himself. He's a there he is, Kyle Knight. He's the knifer. He's what they call him at, on plays like that. So it's fourth down and eight. Not out of the field with 12-16. Remaining in the game in Jacksonville, Georgia 20 and Florida 18. The Georgia Bulldogs will kick on fourth down. Line of scrimmage, their own 35. Mark Makowitz with a good high spiral. Taken at the 23-yard line by Curry. And Ivory is buried there with 12 minutes and 5 seconds remaining in the game. A 43-yard kick. Tech still leads Notre Dame 3-0. Incredible. Third quarter. Nebraska leading Kansas State 3-0. First quarter. Alabama. We've highlighted both of their touchdowns in our reports in New York. Ohio State at the half leads Illinois 28-7. Pitt out in front now, coming from behind to overtake Louisville at the half. Penn State having a tough tussle with North Carolina State, leading by four. The Florida Gators at their own 24-yard line, first and ten. Tyrone Young in motion. Peace. Turns it up to the 32-yard line. Navy and Syracuse are deadlocked in the third as are West Virginia and Temple in the second. And Army at the half has a big advantage over Air Force. Cornell leads Yale 21-0 at the half. And Dartmouth leads Columbia by the same score at the same point of the game. Second down and two from the 32-yard line. Jones through the middle. Out to the 39-yard line. Harvard. Leading William and Mary at the half. Villanova, an 11 point advantage over Penn, second quarter. Princeton leads Maine, 14 to 7. Halftime, Connecticut leading Boston University. Massachusetts out in front of Holy Cross. Rhode Island, Lehigh tie. First down from the 39 for the Gators. Young in motion again. Finds no room to the 41-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. New Hampshire, a six-point advantage over Lafayette in the fourth quarter. At the half, Colgate 10, Bucknell nothing. In the fourth quarter, to update the North Carolina score, they lead Clemson 24 to 12. And at the half, South Carolina 21 to 10 over the Citadel with Auburn leading Southern Mississippi 14 nothing early in that one. Second down eight. Gators from the 41-yard line. Young moving again. Peace having a lot of trouble here, but scrambles out and throws as a man open at the 48-yard line. And complete there to Chris Commonsworth. Chris Collinsworth came from the near side all the way over. That is unbelievable. Collinsworth is going to cross all the way over from this side, number 21, crossing over, and he's coming, going to come back to the pass. So when he sees P start scrambling, get right there, come back and catch that ball. Critical play for young Wayne Peace and Chris Collinsworth together. Third down and one from the 48-yard line. 9.49 left in the game. Florida trailing by two. Peace tries to sneak ahead for the first down, and it's going to be close. Halftime, Kentucky leading 14 to nothing over Vanderbilt. Duke, 17-9 over Wake Forest at the half, and a first down was picked up by Peace. Rutgers leading by six over Virginia at the half. In the second quarter, Wolverines and Badgers no score. Purdue, 16-point lead over Iowa. Minnesota leads Indiana by eight at the half. Michigan State leads Northwestern by 18. First down, Florida, 49-yard line. Time going to in motion. Jones to the 49-yard line, where Pat McShay makes the stop, and the clock running down with 9-10 to play. Oklahoma, Kansas underway. Nothing there yet. Same story, Iowa State, Missouri. Oklahoma State, the early lead against the Bucs. Baylor, easily over Arkansas in the fourth. Texas, 6-0 over Houston, second. 
second and eight at the Georgia 49-yard line. Peace going complete to the 30-yard line. Tyrone Young. Scott Werner made the catch. Tyrone Young has now caught eight passes and for one extra for the two-point conversion, a total of nine. Young is just going to curl inside. He's being picked up by linebacker Ross, number 48, but he works inside, and the throw is absolutely perfect. Warner, number 19, finally brings Tyrone Young down. down but please, you cannot believe what this young Pierce boy is doing. They're threatening to beat the number two team in the nation. Undefeated Georgia, eight to nothing with a freshman quarterback. Not, practically no running, all passing on his part and Young's receptions. First down, and it's Jones pulling his way to the 26-yard line. You really have to be amazed because two times today it looked like Florida was on the verge of falling right out of the ball game. Make it three. Right after Walker's initial touchdown, that had to be very dispiriting. Then they're down 14-3, give the ball up and get it back on a key interception. Then when Georgia's moving again, leading 17-10, they're able to stop. Georgia has to settle for a field goal. So three different times, Florida has really kept its composure today. And now they're on the verge of perhaps going ahead. Second down, five from the 25. 7.40 to play. Terry Williams. An infrequent carry as Williams spells Jones at the running back spot. Nate Taylor made the stop. And it'll be third down and a long four. What we've been noticing early it was that Tyrone Young on the short side did not have a defensive man lined up in front of him. And the quick pass had hurt Georgia. Now they've moved another linebacker out and they're covering all four of the receivers with men lined up in front of them. Third down, a long four for Florida. Peace throwing and it's knocked down, incomplete. The play made by Nate Taylor, number 47, one of the linebackers, Frank. Yes, Tate had, Nate had moved out along with Ross from the other side, and he gets right in the line of fire. He was throwing the look-in pass. Number 47 is going to jump and knock the ball down. Now we have the critical field goal situation. Put Florida ahead. A look at Vince Dooley as Brian Clark comes out onto the field to try to put Ward out in front. Slight angle to the right, 40-yard attempt. They'll spot it at the 30-yard line. Snap is good. The kick is long enough. The kick is good. The Florida Gators, who did not win a game in 1979, are trying to win their seventh of 1980. They lead Georgia by one. right in down 14 to 7 there again the standings as we started play today Georgia and LSU the only unbeaten teams in the conference all five of those teams have a shot at the Sugar Bowl Florida is stunning everybody here with a 21 to 20 lead and 652 left in the game as Herschel Walker gets set to receive the kick and downs it in the end zone and will come out to the 20 yard line here's the reaction to the field. Look at all of them. Are they excited? They're ahead of the undefeated number two ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Brian Clark. Brian Clark. Expressing the emotion felt by half of the crowd here in the Gator Bowl. Again, Florida got half the tickets. Georgia got half the tickets. Been a wild one. All right, Georgia from the 20. 6.52 to go in the game. Florida leads 21-20. And they're anxious on the right side is Georgia. What happened, Al? The Florida team shifted their defense, and it drew Georgia offside. The Florida defense has the, the right to move laterally, and it drew Georgia offside and gave them a first and 15, first and 15 situation. Watch the left side of the Georgia line. Well, you can't see the tech line. I get it right. I'm excited, too. Yeah. What happened? Norris Brown, number 88, jumped offside, but the Florida defense shifted over, and uh, young uh, Brown broke the snap count. It looked like also Nat Hudson may have been a little anxious, too, even before Brown was that time. First and 15. Pitch it to Walker. Nothing doing. 
Florida is just sky high right now. Kyle Knight came shooting through, amongst others, to make the tackle. It's sort of an enervating day in terms of the weather. It's uh, in the 80s. It's warm. <laughs> Don't tell that to the Gators, though. This is unbelievable, Al, the comeback of this Florida football team. They went through adversity last year, and they have learned to live and want to win desperately. Second and 17. Ballou going deep, looking for Jones, and it's knocked away. Incomplete. Chuck Jones, the intended receiver, Tim Groves, was covering on the play. Actually, Jones is trying to go deep, but Groves, number 20, is going to come across and deflect the ball at the very last minute. He's a senior, walk-on, and a very fine safety man. Has three key interceptions in the last three ball games to stop the opposing team's offense and preserve a victory for Florida. Riley Pell, what a turnaround, and he had his work. Ballou, deep again. Intended for Scott, double covered and incomplete, and Georgia has to kick it away. Sonny Gilliam covering. Scott thought there should have been interference. No flag. Watch Gilliam number 43, Scott number 24, and I think Scott wanted some interference, but Gilliam has every right to his position on the field. He doesn't interfere, in my judgment. Neither the officials incomplete, and Georgia has to punt. Mark Malkowitz, good, high, deep kick, a beauty. Taken back at the 33-yard line by Ivory Curry, and they drop him back at the 31. So now Florida will try to use up some of the clock, something they haven't done today because they've been going to the air so much. But that'll change. 5.53 to go. Florida leads 21-20. 5.53 left in the game. Florida leading Georgia 21 to 20. A big game in the Southeastern Conference. A big game as far as the national rankings are concerned. Georgia number two coming in. Florida number 20. And now Florida to try to utilize some of the clock from their own 31 yard line. First and 10. The freshman quarterback, Wayne Peace. He's been in all the way. Tyrone Young is in motion. And they give it to Jones, who first through the middle for five. Now, Florida, since the SEC entered into its agreement with the Sugar Bowl in 1977, has not been there. Mississippi State has not been there. LSU has not been there since the agreement was formed in 1977. Georgia went once the first year. Alabama's been there the last three times. Florida, though, Frank, would be in a pretty commanding position if they win here and if Alabama beats LSU today. Very definitely, and I think these youngsters know, know, know this. They've been talking about it this week, and they have played like they're going to go there. Second and five, Jones again gets a couple. The first tiebreaker, let's say the conference wound up in a tie, would be head-to-head. -head. In other words, they take the teams who face each other. Alabama, for instance, does not face Georgia. But Florida will have already defeated Georgia, will have already defeated Mississippi State, which would be the key there because Mississippi State could still get in, having only lost one in the conference. Alabama would be in trouble because of the time, having lost to Mississippi State. And if it boils down to a couple of teams that haven't been there before and they can't break the tie head-to-head, -head, then the Sugar Bowl itself will select their representative, according to Scoop Hutchins of the Southeastern Conference. Timeout called by Georgia, by Florida rather. Florida taking a timeout. Wayne Peace asking for it with 440 remaining in the game as a big play is upcoming on a third and three. We'll be right back. We're back with 440 to go. Florida has it third and three at their own 38 yard line. A major play for the Gators here as they try to keep possession. And let's see what Peace does. He throws a quick into Young, and Young has the first down of the 44-yard line. <laughs> so Tyrone Young, who's been their man of the hour in the second half. You're going to see Young uncovered, but the safety man is going to try to come up and intercept the ball right in front of him, and he doesn't get there in time. Linebacker 49, Taylor coming out and trying to make the play, but a gutty call by Florida and perfect execution by Peace. First down, 
Gators at the 44-yard line. Young in motion. They're going to chew up the clock now. That's Jones on the ground for nothing. 408, 407 and counting down as Tim Crow made the tackle. Coming up next, a reminder, a good many of you will see Stanford against USC. Some of you will see Virginia Tech, Florida State, or McNeese State, Louisiana Tech. Those of you who watch the Trojans and the Cardinals, you've got Gordon Adams, Marcus Allen from USC, ranked third and fourth in the two polls. Stanford has some of the greatest skilled people you will ever see, and that's not any hype. You've got Elway, the sophomore quarterback. You've got Darren Nelson, who's as an exciting a runner as you'll find in college football today. The great running back, and also Ken Marjoram, who's a consensus All-America wide receiver. It should be some game. And they've got another receiver, Andrew Tyler, who's had a great year as they've been double-teaming Marjoram. They've been going to Tyler. And John Elway, I think, is the most mobile quarterback in college football today. It's practically impossible to tackle for a loss. Second down and 10, Florida at its own 44-yard line. Peace pitching, and Jones slides down wisely. He was being tackled, but he stayed from the 48-yard line. Peace looking, going to the 38 and incomplete. At the 38, I do believe, or are they going to call it complete in the fumble out of bounds? That's what they're going to call it. He made the catch and lost the ball out of bounds. Tyrone Young. What a break for Florida. I, I'm really not believing the execution there. First by Tyrone Powers, uh, get Tyrone Young getting open. He catches the ball and he gets hit by two defenders, mainly uh, Scott Warner, number 19. But the throw was sensational, as you can see. Just and the ball is complete, but goes out of bounds. Oh, he called it down. I'm sorry, called it down. At the 38-yard line, it's Jones whose spot has been taken by Terry Williams now, getting the carry and moving for a yard or so. And the clock is definitely the enemy of the Georgia Bulldogs. 2.43 left. Second down, seven. Of course, last weekend we saw Alabama upset. We saw UCLA upset by Arizona. The top two teams going down. Today you've got Notre Dame trailing with 18 minutes left in the game to Georgia Tech. You've got Georgia trailing with 2.20 remaining in the game. And Florida takes a timeout. Peace was looking over for a call from the bench. And instead of getting a delay call here, they take another timeout. 2.20 to go in the game. 21-20, Florida. Second down and seven yards to go. As we're back, Florida has it at the Georgia 36-yard line. And trying the middle is Calvin Davis for a minimal gain. Setting up a third down. And there is Vince Dooley, who wants to take a timeout on defense. Timeout for Georgia. Unofficially, we now have Georgia with just one timeout remaining. One thing that Florida is trying to do on the last play, they went into a regular running formation, two tight ends, a high formation, but they still could not block Georgia. Georgia was in an eight-man front going through the gaps and stopped them for no gain, bringing up another third down. How, I think in each of these uh, uh, first series of the possession, Florida has had third down and has made the first down each time. In that game now at Grand Field in Atlanta, nine and a half minutes left. Georgia Tech leading 3-0. So both of the major universities in the state of Georgia are involved in incredible games today. Tech now, leading 3-0 in the fourth, and here Georgia trailing 21-20 in the fourth. Last week we had seven upsets in the top 20. Six of them were playing on the road. Notre Dame is on the road in Atlanta. There's something to that of playing in the other fellow's backyard helps even up the ball game. Third down, eight. Florida at the 36-yard line. James Jones and Doug Kellum are the running backs. And Peace will get racked up back at the 40-yard line. Tim Crow was the man who buried him back there which means if they wanted to go with Clark at this point, it would have to be a 57-yard field goal attempt, and they're not going to chance that. They're going to send in the punter and then turn it over to the defense. 
Actually, Peace had tried a bootleg. He was going to fake to the tailback and then have a naked bootleg to the outside, but Crow was not fooled and threw him for the loss. Dickert to punt. Werner's going to let it fly, and it goes out of bounds at the eight-yard line. So a beauty. With a minute 35 remaining in the game. 135 left. Vince Dooley has to see his team. Of course, they don't have to go 92 yards. When you've got Rex Robinson, all you really have to do is get it down around the 30. Florida used up four minutes and 18 seconds on that last drive. So now Georgia trying to get it downfield for Robinson. 135 to go in the game. Buck below. Scrambling out now. All the receivers recovered and stopped the clock by getting out of bounds. At the seven yard line with 125 remaining. David Galloway with a pursuit that time. And the Florida secondary has three sophomores and one senior. They've alternated a couple of the uh, alternate unit who are also sophomores, but they've done a fantastic job of covering the Georgia receivers. We must mention that Amp Arnold, one of the fine Georgia receivers, left in the second quarter with an injury and has not returned. Buckfalo. Not a good day at all. Six out of 14 for 52, second and 10. Ballou, an incomplete, dropped by Charles Jr., number 80, out at the 18-yard line. So it's third down and 10. And you can see that frustration that now permeates not only Ballou, but all of the Georgia team, certainly the partisans. Al, you're exactly right. As we look at Vince Dooley, we know what he, I, I know personally what he's going through. But the Florida team reestablished their momentum on that great play by Tyrone Young. Up until then, Georgia had everything going for their, in their way. Hello. Third down. Forced out of the pocket again. Going. Has a man open. Scott. 25. 30. Scott. To the 40 yard line. To the 50. Lindsey Scott. To the 30. To the 20. Can you believe that? The bench cannot run out to the team. The fans, Georgia fans, are out there. So that it. Look at Vince Dooley. He's going for two. That's what he's holding his hand up for. You know he went for. If we how quickly things can change. Oh my gosh! I can't believe it. I'm telling you, in the last three years, Georgia has been involved in two of the most incredible games we have ever seen. They beat Georgia Tech 29-28 in the final game of the 78 season. And this one is just as exciting and every bit as incredible. There is Lindsey Scott, number 24, on a third and 10 where Ballou was forced out of the pocket, flushed out again, found Scott over the middle with some great moves and then the foot race, and in he goes for the touchdown. And we still have a minute three remaining. Let's look at the play again. It was a sensational effort first by Ballou because the receivers were all covered. He's in the end zone. Watch him scramble over the left. That's the advantage of having mobile. Then he directs traffic. Now here's where the excitement comes. You can see the tremendous speed of Lindsey Scott as he takes sailing down the field. Could not be caught by any of the Florida secondary, but he picked up a block from someone, and I believe it was Jones. Let's see if this view gives us an idea. Right here, somebody coming from the left is going to free him and block him to safety man. Let's see if he is the hero coming right to the right of your screen. Number one, Jones is the man who sprung Lindsey Scott all the way for the touchdown. 93 yards when all was lost. Now it looks like all is won. What else can you say? Oh, it's uh, been incredible. Charlie Pell 
Here's his reaction, the Florida coach. Disbelief. You don't even have to see his face no. to know what was on it. Now we look at him from another angle, live. His team also out of timeouts right now with 103. Georgia setting up. Georgia had just taken his last time out to set up this two-point conversion attempt. Below throwing into the end zone and overshooting the intended receiver, Scott. But that may be academic. We'll see. 26-21. That, of course, only important if Florida can come back and score. Now your term of disbelief is well taken because to go 93 yards with just a little over a minute to go after you had failed to do anything for practically a quarter, all on, I, I get print for three people. One, the loose, mobile, mobile over, moving over to the right, the great catch by Scott, the block by Jones, and then the speed of Lindsey Scott taking it all the way down. Well, Georgia trying to stay unbeaten in the conference. They have one more conference game left as you look at Scott again. Next week, Georgia to take on Auburn. And the Tigers have been a nemesis for Georgia the past couple of years. Lindsey Scott gets our next games coming up. Stanford and Southern Cal and Florida State and Virginia Tech. McNeese and Louisiana Tech are as exciting as this one. I don't know how the football fan at home could survive. I couldn't. Florida gets a break because of what happened in the end zone. The ensuing celebration following the touchdown, they've been assessed a 15-yard penalty, which is tacked onto the kickoff. That does mean that Georgia kicks off from its own 25-yard line. Meanwhile, you saw Tech still leading Notre Dame 3-0, and there are only four minutes to play in that game. This could be the all-time day for the Peach State, the way things are turning out now. A different story over there, the Gator bench. Watching the lead evaporate. Robinson's kick taken at the 15-yard line by John L. Brown to the 30 and dropped at the 36-yard line. So here come the Gators now with exactly 59 seconds remaining in the game. We, we've still got to praise this Florida football team who, as you said earlier, Al, were out of the ball game, came back and went ahead and looked like they had it won, and then a just in total disbelief, a Georgia touchdown may have taken it away from him. Wayne Peace is 20 out of 36 for 286 yards today. First down from the 36-yard line. Over the middle, and intercepted at the 45-yard line by Mike Fisher, and he gets to the 36, and that should wrap it up. The Georgia Bulldogs have really pulled one out of a hat. Unbelievable. Here's young freshman quarterback who I've got to praise. He's throwing the ball, and you never overthrow a pass down the middle. It's likely to be intercepted. Mike Fisher, number 31, with a game-saving interception, putting Georgia in position to run the clock out since Florida has no timeouts left. They do not have to do anything, Georgia, but fall on the football, and they're still undefeated. Because of the length of this game, no Prudential scoreboard following this one. We'll immediately be joining the games you'll be watching as the second half of this doubleheader. We've got a penalty flag down. And that stops the clock at 46 seconds remaining. Coming up, SC Stanford, Virginia Tech, Florida State, then Zulie's brother Bill leading Tech, McNeese State, and Louisiana Tech on college football. And what a first half we have had from Jacksonville today, a thriller, 26-21 Georgia. Fans that are going to see Stanford, we talked about earlier, but John Elway, the six-foot-two quarterback from Stanford, I think, and everyone has seen him play, thinks he's going to be the greatest quarterback of all time. A great arm, mobile, awareness to pick defenses apart, and they will throw from anywhere on the field. All he did last week was throw six touchdown passes That's four right. in the first quarter. And then Southern Cal has one of the great offensive football teams in America. The mixture that keeps the defense off balance with Gordon Adams and, of course, Marcus Allen, the leading rusher, I think, any of the leading rusher right now in America, in the nation. 
Boy, that should be some football game. There's, well, there's the others. 15 yard march off here against Georgia. We need a participation, 12 men on the field. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Good way to describe it. 50, 12 men on the field at play, it's a 15 yard penalty. If one man fails to get off and he's the 12th man, it's a five yard penalty. Had to explain that in the game between Penn State and Alabama, as you remember, when the, for the national championship. 15 yard penalty and gave uh, the Alabama a first down on a punt. The problem with Florida right now is they don't have a timeout. They can't stop the clock. So Ballou simply falls on it, and that's going to do it. They do not have to run another play. Meanwhile, run down the top ten quickly. It's late in the fourth, Georgia Tech leading Notre Dame. A stunner there. As time expires here in Jacksonville. And this storied rivalry. They've got another chapter that it's going to take several pages to cover when they write about this one. Ben Stooley coming over to try to find Charlie Pell. There they are. Boy, I tell you, that Pell has done some job in Florida. They lost today, but 0 10 and 1 last year, and to come that close to upsetting the number two ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia, meanwhile, now 5 0 in the conference. They've got their reservations to New Orleans for New Year's Day. All they have to do next week is defeat Auburn and, of course, hope that LSU loses to Alabama today. Final score 26 to 21, the Bulldogs. 